All right, we'll call the meeting to order. 602. Um, before we get into the agenda this evening, um, one thing I wanted to um, bring up to the select board was in trying to be as most efficient with our time as possible, and, and we, we always seem to have um, new audience members every, every week uh, that don't always necessarily understand what the rules of the select board and when to interject or not interject and when their time is and how much time they have. As I thought maybe it would be helpful maybe going forward that <clears throat> um, maybe we can just read off like a, a one paragraph um, what to expect at the select board meeting um, and how the select board meeting kind of runs. And then the other thing I was thinking about is looking around, I know there's different <coughs> meetings where at times they'll like say, okay, public comments only 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And I don't know if I wanted to necessarily like handicap the time on it, but maybe, hand, but maybe just um, build upon time per issue. So, uh, you know, maybe a cap of time of, I don't know, five minutes per thing that comes up from the audience. And then, and then if uh, more time is warranted, maybe it better served as a, um, agenda item at the next meeting or something where we can more thoroughly talk about the item because it seems like sometimes sometimes we get through the public comment period very quickly and other times we're here for 45 minutes to an hour um, and, and you don't normally know what the public comment questions are coming so I wanted to kind of pull from the board of what we thought um, on that you know if we're if we're good with the public comment of you know three to five minutes per, per, per item that they bring up. And then if more time needed, we can either grant that or continue it to another date or, you know, something like that. And just so we keep it, keep things rolling. Because especially as we get going right now, we're going to have a lot of um, budget discussions and warning pieces and stuff that probably will take some significant amount of time. Not to mention, you know, there's often people that are sitting in the audience or maybe at home, once we get it all figured out with Leonard there, is, um, you know, people that kind of sit in at an appropriate time thinking that they're going to be there for a certain topic rather than have to wait like an hour to get to their appointment or, you know, or agenda item. So, um, so, so I think I, one thing I just wanted to um, just review with the, um, with everybody tonight is, so select board meetings are, are really the meeting of the select board. Um, so it's a meeting of, in this case, the five select board um, individuals as well as town manager to go over, you know, operational um, policy type driven um, information that's happened over the last two weeks since the last one. Um, or, or continuance and on a certain issue that we've been talking about. Um, and these are held in public session. So the public is welcome to attend the meetings. And in most cases, like you'll see, there's public comment. And our board is really good about, you know, even though there, uh, there doesn't need to be any public comment during each action item, we're usually really good about, you know, answering questions um, that people might have. So, um, so, so what I would just want to do, and then once we get on to the Zoom piece of it, it'll probably get a little more difficult because we're going to have to, 10 to audience plus 10 to the Zoom piece of it. Um, so I, I don't know, I mean, maybe something to think about down the road would be, you know, do we have two public comment periods? You know, one for the beginning for just any randomness and one maybe farther back in the meeting to, I don't know, take, take on other tasks or something. But um, um, so just make sure um, for the meeting that you're signed in so that we have you for the public record. Um, and you know sometimes there are um, certain faces that are here often and sometimes there's not so um, just make sure when it's your time to speak that just um, your, your name and usually your street or road that you live on is the easiest because a lot of people are like oh yeah okay well, we know what that is you know um, if we don't know the face so um, so this uh, so and if we're all good with it as the board wise we'll just keep each individual public comment action to 
three minutes or five minutes? What, what do you yeah, think? Five, like five to seven. Uh, and then if more time is needed, five, then... We just lost 50 minutes, so it's right. yeah. tough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like the idea of keeping it so that we're not wasting an hour of our time to public comment, but I also think that having some flexibility, so if there's something to just, that we know we'll wrap up within 10 minutes, we just let it, let it right. go through and, and actually play its course and not just cut it off because we've hit time. Right, okay. I, I would also suggest that we might have an order of the day, so that if we have an appointment with someone that we might uh, sustain the public sustain comment. Sustain or up. hold the public comments, let that appointment happen and come back to public comments or, or put them at the end or That's something. the way we do it now. I put the appointments after before. appointments. I put yeah. the appointments before public comment for that reason so, because you're right. If we gave them yes, six o'clock right. and we don't get to them until seven thirty, I feel so, horrible. <laughs> yeah. If that yeah. makes that okay. makes sense. I think a five minute with the option of extending if we're close to a yeah, I mean, and I think, you know, over the years, I mean, a, a far majority of the time, it's, you know, within the realm of time, you know, right. but once in a while, we, <laughs> we, once in a while, something we comes up that we didn't anticipate, right. and, it, and it can be pretty lengthy, so. Well, I think, too, the, this is the only time when the five of us are allowed to be in the same place at the same time, talking about town business, so. <laughs> It's true. That's we, a good point. You know, we can't we can't gather on the street corner or have another meeting elsewhere. So this is the only time when the five of us can actually get together and discuss, you know, town business or whatever comes up. So it's important for us to have our discussion and do what we have to do. So public comment period is is anything that's not on the agenda items for the night. And once <laughs> the action items are going, if you do have a question. Um, or a comment to it, you know, you don't have to, it's not school, you don't have to leave your hand up, but maybe just put your hand up to one of us sees you, and I'll just write it down, and then at the most appropriate time, we'll, we'll ask for feedback, because um, I don't want, to, don't want people to think that we're not calling on you, um, um, type deal, so. All right, so we'll just move to the agenda for this evening. Uh, is there anything that needs to be amended to the agenda? No, Therese got a couple things. Yeah, for the down by the VOREC letter of support, I think after that, um, one of them is a project, it's a long title. So, <laughs> project resolution of commitment from municipality. Um, so, that would be a motion to adopt that resolution. It's for projects involving class four town highways, and we need to have board signatures on it. Um, and then there's also a um, another letter here I just want to let you guys know about that's also part of the VORET grant, which says um, that either myself or Chris is going to need to sign, saying that we'll allow, allow and maintain public access for 10 years on the trails and five plus years on any kiosks if we get that VORET grant. So, but they, they want all of this paperwork together, and since it's kind of coming to fruition, you know, at the last minute, um, those are so adjust, those are additions, and I think we can just do them after the VOREC letter of support since they're all VOREC items. Okay. For that, for that I, I think we're still writing for the whole $500,000, but I'm not positive right now. All right. I would like to add an item about climate change that may have an impact on the morning or the annual meeting, so it might be. The, the climate time. change coordinator? Yeah. That, okay, perfect. That's, did the select board get that? Because I made copies of that. If you could yeah, email just, it to yeah. everybody. Okay, yeah. good. Then I did make copies, so I see I'm here. Just as a discussion point only? Under well, any other business or? Or under the town meeting warning? Right, wouldn't it affect? We, if, if we choose to, you know, have something <laughs> authorizing a town coordinator, that would need to go on to the town meeting. So I don't know if we want to discuss it, act on it tonight, or take a look at it in more depth and decide whether to act on it tonight or, or in a couple well, of Well, the, the only reason why I ask that is that I, I think that probably the most appropriate way to do it would be to have a discussion in regards to at the board level tonight. <clears throat> and then if, there, if there's the potential of acting on that, we should give the public the opportunity to weigh in on 
that, do we think? I mean, typically in the past, if we're going to act on an issue, we have it advertised for a period of time where if we add a board item tonight without it being on there, there may be some people that wanted to, mm -hmm. to talk about that aren't here. Um, that's just kind of Yeah, I think it'd be sense, good but, discussion at least because at least I can't figure out what we'd have to add to the warning. Um, so I'm, I don't know what it is exactly we'd be adding to the warning. So yeah, I'm, that, that I'm looking at the sample for the for Randolph. So um, I don't care where you put it on the agenda, but it'll be a good conversation to have. <clears throat> Well, my proposal is that we actually ask for a resol town resolution that to, the town would act on. To do through the town, through the at the town, town meeting, and that we ask for preparation for that proposal. Uh, so, the do request we request is to prepare a resolution to go before the town meeting? Do we want to just talk about it at, at the town we meeting talk. warning piece yeah. of it then? Okay. All right, I'll just write that in there so we don't forget. Okay. All right. And we didn't have any appointments, however, Jessica's here in her family in regards to their um, place on Dart Hill. Um, so if um, Can we add them as an appointment? Yeah, so I was going to say, you know, rather than them have to sit here any longer than they need to, if we could get them in so that they can talk about with the, the issues that they have um, with their land on Dart Hill and at least get the information to the board um, on that. Yeah. Everybody's good with that? Good with that, Paul? Yeah. Okay. Anything else to the agenda? All right. Just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So we will move right on to our first appointment. I, I apologize. I talked to Jessica a little bit. She had messaged me um, two weeks ago. I think it was on the day of our last meeting. So we didn't really have time to get her on to the um, to the agenda. Um, um, so so they have um, recently acquired a, a property on Dart Hill, um, and we currently have some infrastructure um, that's been in place. That um, there's some storm water that comes out of those infrastructures onto their property. Um, so kind of the uh, in, in a nutshell. Um, and I apologize, we didn't, um, I had talked to Therese after talking to you saying that, that, um, that you guys were looking to get on to the, um, agenda. Um, but then we didn't hear anything else from you on like any extra documents or pictures or anything that you wanted to put before us. So. So I don't want to say like forgot about you, but I just assumed at that point that maybe you weren't coming. So, um, and you probably saw Teresa and I poking around up there today, um, just looking at things. But um, typically, the to get the documents to the board um, be prior to the meeting, that way we can make copies and all the board members can see them. Especially what now with the COVID and you know moving people in and around the, the meeting isn't as, as, long as, we as safe, initiate, so. And this is our first time, so as long sure. as we can issue the documents tonight, and then if we have to you know, come to another one to you know, revisit it, it's, it, it's fine, but sure. we just want to kind of get, get it rolling. Yeah, so if, if um, yeah, if you want, why don't you just briefly state the, the issue that you're having on your property and um, we'll open so discussion. My name is Josh. Uh, and uh, we live on Dart, which is basically on the corner of uh, Brink and Dart, so coming out from Camp Brook. Um, where we live, there's a covert that is basically pointing directly at our house. It is the, it is the runoff of two separate fields above us, including the two roads, and it all gets narrowed down to that covert and dumped on our property. And when it first was in there, um, from when we had the engineer talking to us up there, he was explaining how um, it works when it comes to 
um, absorbing the water on the runoff. And after a while, there's only so much that the land will be able to absorb, and then it will start just bringing its own path of destruction, in which is what's happened. And so now over the last, I'd say, four or five years, it's been creating, creating ultimately a brook and dividing our property down the line and also bringing a whole bunch of road debris on our property. It's been digging up the, uh, the electric as well, so it's, it's really not a safe situation. Um, we've tried talking to the town and it's nothing that they were interested in helping us with um, and that's why we talked to the lawyer first and he brought an engineer up and he suggested to talk to the board first just to kind of play the roles and, and see if we can do it in a peaceful manner. So that's kind of what we're doing to see if there's a way that we can divert that in a correct path that isn't facing our house and property because um, we're trying to fix that piece of property up. It did get hand down and it was just a junkyard everybody knows. Um, on the, on the right? Correct. The bridge. Yep, yep. So now, I mean, we're at the point of uh, picking up the rest of the scrap. I'm hoping after the snow goes away this year and our finances pick back up, we'll be able to continue the project and we're putting a new house up there. Um, but this is just kind of a huge burden that's offsetting us. Um, and if we're focusing on the property, we're not going to be able to afford focusing on the diverting of that, that brook ourselves. So if, if there's a way that we can do it, we have documents, we have um, the name of the engineer that talked to us. We have photos also from the last few years because of, we've been meaning to do something about it but just didn't know how. So we have progressive photos that you can actually even see where the damage is starting and now it's looking way worse. And it, so I, I had taken a quick visit up with Therese today because uh, I was sitting there and um, I was looking at my um, agenda items and I didn't see you guys on there so I said well I, maybe they're not coming but anyways I want to go up and look at it anyways so Teresa and I took a, a venture up there to look at it um, so it and, and, and probably one of those cases where it's probably best that all the board members take a drive up there just so they can see themselves but um, so from talking with people and looking at it so originally a majority of the water that comes off Dart Hill um, so if you're going up the hill it comes down on the left side of the hill and, and it used to come, from the looks of it, it looks like it came all the way down to the bottom culvert, which then comes out kind of right in the middle of what they say is like the residential part of their land. Um, and in a period of time, maybe Doug knows because he's got a lot of uh, knowledge, but a period of time ago, you know, this, looking at it, it's years ago, we installed a culvert up from there at the next driveway that now looks like it diverts, I don't know, a majority of the water um, to the back part of their land that isn't buildable. Does that sound right? Yes. So we've helped out in one part of shedding that water um, from what we saw today. But there's still what we call overflow water that comes, continues down, down to the juncture of Dart Hill. And then that culvert is right where the paved apron is. And then that culvert goes right directly and there is no real outlet. It just spills into their land. Um, and, I th and from talking, and, and again, uh, Doug might have some history on it, but it sounds like over time, the, um, the residents that were there had always done some of their own ditching or, you know, to, to get the proper flow of water to go which was actually I was having a hard time trying to figure out where it went, you know, um, but. Uh, Normally it flows literally down right through our driveway and then down into the river. Yes. And it covers Cuts right across. And, and there's it's pictures in there too of that. I had a. Den, yeah. Which is now when I drive in, I actually, I have, it bottoms out my car because there's a huge puddle that occurs every time it rains. Um, so then like in the winter time, I actually have to like, scrape it to like go down so that way it just flows because if I don't it just puddles. Because there's no driveway culvert there, right? We looked for right. that today so there's yeah, no, no driveway culvert. Right. I think so. Last year it covered the the tires of of two vehicles, a truck and a car that were parked over there. Um, and it just eroded right around them and sank them in. And they had to have mm. someone come and get them and get rid of them because it ruined them. And then Another thing is, when the engineer came, he said the way it should be done is the culvert should go drainage on the other side of the road with rocks down to the river, and then that way 
if it does that, then it's not going to go on the property and destroy and go right at. And they have kids that play there too. So that's not safe. So his suggestion was basically to cap that culvert and then keep it on the other side of the road, install an under culvert under, which would be brink, and then create and then a stone line ditch, into the ditch brook, all the other side. Yeah. Because that culvert that we're talking about has obviously been there for at least 20 years. You can yeah. tell because it's under the pavement. We never and The I, state of it. Vermont is giving money to towns to fix up properties and things too for like, you know, um, land that culverts and roads and all this other stuff because the federal government is giving that to the state of Vermont. I'm not sure how all that works out in place, but it's all over the news where they're going to oh, be giving yeah. American money Res to people. American Rescue Plan money, yeah, maybe? I, yeah, and this place, this place here, if you remember, in 2011 was completely, with Irene, really eroded and everything. So, I mean, these are big things that we could look at to help pay for that stuff. That really needs to be done because this is not safe. And the electrical's getting eroded up, and you've got kids living there, you know, and they're trying to make it a nice home so people don't go by it and have an eyesore. And they're slowly working on it. But financially, like when we all started, it was very hard when we all started, money wise, and they don't have the money to come out and just dump it like that either. And it, it looked like from <clears throat> from viewing it in the field as well as knowing a little bit of the history of the properties, and correct me if I'm wrong at any point, but it, it seems as though that, that the culvert in question, that piece of infrastructure was put there before any development on that property before you owned it, right? So if, if I get it right, it sounds like the culvert was put there, and when the culvert was put there decades ago, that there wasn't, there wasn't really any any building or any dwelling there. It was just a piece of property that that the stormwater was discharging onto. And then, as the property uh, became inhabited and there was a dwelling that was put there, um, it seems like that's that's the point where, at some point, there was an issue there. The town put a culvert just up from it to try to divert a majority of the water so it wouldn't go right through the dwelling but there's still water that will go onto the dwelling now that, that might have not have been a dwelling years ago, I think. Um, I see a couple heads nodding, so that's what I'm assuming that. Back in 2000, uh, when Irene hit, that road actually got um, eroded out, and they actually had to fix that culvert. Um, that one right on the... Yes, okay. so I know that, that they have done some work to it, but yeah. they haven't upgraded it or done anything so to and, fix it. And this is the problem, because the Irene is what... Whatever happened with Irene is what triggered the issue there, because if that is the case, which it could very well be... I, I haven't been there but since that long, but if it was there for decades, this didn't start happening until Irene. It started trickling down and creating more problems year after year after year. And I started, I personally became a part of the property uh, a few years after Irene. So uh, basically, it's basically something that's been starting since then. So the previous owner prior to Irene, I've been there since there was no issue prior to that, you know? And we would have the puddle that would occur in the middle of the driveway, but we didn't have the erosion coming in like it is now. Did the original Mr. Hill, we'll call the original Mr. Hill, who owned it as Reginald maybe, um, did he use to, um, I, I was under the impression that he used to trench it maybe a little bit where it came down, that he used to trench it down the hill a little bit from the outfall on, on the property to, there's no, did he used to maintain that? There's no ditch on that side of the road. If you, uh, if you, no, no, I meant on the property that's where the outfall is. If you walked on our property, there's yeah. literally no ditch over there. It's literally just our flat land and it goes up on a hill. And it goes okay. right across and the driveway. And just, the water just, it's made its own course down through the I mean, I, looking at uh, it today, I mean, idea, ideally what needs to happen there, and I guess that's where the question is, is this a property owner thing or is this, or does the town have responsibility or is it a joint thing? Is ideally it looks like right now, if you leave the culvert in place, then, then there needs to be some work done on the outflow of the culvert that could drop that storm water in a safe ditch that would basically would come around the bottom side of the road. And then there needs to be a driveway culvert that the water could go through the driveway culvert and it could come out by the bridge. Um, 
I like the what, idea of her though capping it off on that side and but, running it on the other side because in that way it's not on their land and when those kids go out to play in the driveway because they don't have a lot of land right now. Well, the the real harder. problem with that is is half of our property would be ditched at that point because if you have you walk down the driveway and you have the brook right here it goes to our driveway and then we have all of this property to the right that we can't utilize. And if we had to ditch it, we'd still be losing. And there's a lot of property we'd have to ditch from the driveway down to the brook. I mean, you see the distance from the other side of the road, right? Where that bridge ends, that's not where our property stops. Our property stops about halfway through that bridge on that side. So if you go over and look over it, you're gonna see that we're gonna have to ditch all the way from that culvert I can't, I'm not good with distance, but that's a long ways that we're gonna have to ditch on our property just to, just to flow it from the culvert that's emptying from two hills in the two fields mm -hmm. down to our property. Like, yeah. that's the biggest problem is. That is a distance. But it's yeah. also, it's not only just coming from the culvert, it's coming down the driveway and then coming down the driveway as well. So it's causing the ruts. I mean, I don't know statistics sure. or how to do it exactly, but ultimately, <clears throat> instead of going this way, you just go this way and then you trench it down. Like, I don't know why that's a big problem. I mean, you guys have the equipment as the town to be able to do something like that and the resources. I don't know how much material or how much it would actually cost, but the point is, is it, we're going to have to take up even more of our property just to make it happen. And yep. the culvert does belong to the, the town. Them, so. yeah. I all. think, you know, I think in the the best interest of educating the board members as, as well as, you know, yeah, Therese and, and, and the public works getting a second look at it is, is why don't we plan to have a follow up with you? Um, at our next meeting yeah. and I, I know you have kids and stuff you don't want to have to be bothered by coming to meetings or whatnot um, we could either we could if you go to help us yeah I mean, well I'm just saying you know, that we're asking for help it, it allows the board members to kind of look at it and see what yeah. they think it allows us a little more time to investigate is there an option to keep it on the other side of the street um, you know um, I can have that a type of thing because it's not it always costs. believe it or not it's not always like when it comes to stormwater so when it comes to stormwater once you have your systems in place then they're kind of grandfather in so that's that's where your stormwater is allowed to roll like you can't just randomly put a culvert in somewhere and pipe the stormwater somewhere else because you need permission so um you know, if, if, if it had to go onto another land, then we'd have to get permission to do that, you know, so that it can be convoluted. Um, may not be as easy as, <laughs> as you think, but we can definitely look into the, op you know, the options, I think. That was a great idea, because I think this is a different situation, because if you look at it, there's just a hill right here, and then you got the road. So there's literally nothing, no, if it is the person's property up there, it's literally just a hill with trees on it. So there's no reason why there couldn't be a ditch dug in there. That, that's all. I yeah. could ask. So I'll have Alan take a peek at it because we would have to cut. We'd have to actually, um, we couldn't just cap that culvert. We'd probably have to take it out so that it didn't collapse over time and refill yeah. that culvert. And then I'll take a look. I'll get Alan. We'll go up and look at it and see what it would take to put in a culvert and just see what the, you know what it would take to put it in on the We appreciate side. your time to and take for you guys helping us with this because like I said these guys are new we all have our own property I I purchased that property for tons of money okay and I paid for that piece of property and I'm telling you I own 136 acres in South Royalton and I've never done as much work that we're going to have to do on that property Sure. So, I mean, if it was your land, take it home with this thought. If it was your property, would you want that happening to your land? Because I tell you, I wouldn't want someone, I wouldn't want my land eroding like that and, and having to drive. We've driven down in there and just belling it out. And if, if it wasn't eroding, if it wasn't eroding anything, we wouldn't be here. Sure. No, I, and I went out to look today and I mean, there's, there's no doubt, no doubt about that there's- And it's taking up the electrical wires? Water around. discharge is happening and it's eroding the land near the house. I mean, that's, it's very easy to, to see there. It, it, it just becomes who's responsible for that water and, and, and how do we come to a 
solution like we're talking about. The on last time they went down and looked at there. it, they told us that the town is the town stuff and then the state's not responsible. Yeah, it wouldn't yeah. be there wouldn't be I mean, nothing the involved with the state up there. That would be a, a town slash I just I resident. Would, I would really have to it. if it came to my responsibility, I would really need to try to understand why that would be because you've been up there today. I mean, it's it just doesn't make it wouldn't make sense to me, right? Like, mm -hmm. If it would be my response, I mean, it's a lot that's getting dumped on. Two full fields, and yeah, you, they installed the culvert on the back side of our property, but that's still cutting the land. So even if we, that, that, even if we owned all of that, that would still be cutting a land again in that, in that spot. You say that's unbuildable, but still, regardless, my property is getting destroyed in two different ways. One, to divert the section in the beginning or in the end, for cutting off the flow of the four outputs. That, that, it, I wouldn't understand why that would be my responsibility. So well then, don't we, and, and not to get in, I mean, the, those are better served for, you know, legal end of things, but, you know, the thing in our case that we would look for is, you know, was that structure there prior to you owning the property, right? Because when you buy a piece of property, you're taking upon anything that was there prior. Um, it, it's a very easy thing if we just went up there like last night and put a culvert in and then all of a sudden you're like, what are you doing? Like there's all this discharge on our property. That's an easy fix because we didn't get permission from you. You know what I mean? So it becomes a little bit of a convoluted issue there, but I, I'm, you know, I, I don't know the issue to it, but I'm, I'm sure that we'll be more than willing like to help us. try to work through it and, yeah. and see where we can go there and see what our options are. We might sure. say it's an easy option. We can go across the street or we may say we're going to have to do something different with that culvert on your property and try to make that work somehow. I'll also right? call GMP and ask them to take a peek at the, what they think about what's the stability around the pole and what's going on there. Sure. So I'll call Carol and ask her to take a peek at the, awesome. at the yeah, GMP. And, and then, we, then we can get some more information. For everybody. And we have stuff here for you guys. Um, we can leave that with you. If you oh, yeah, if you want to leave that, <laughs> you, can, you can leave that with Therese and she can make copies. And factor, please. Yeah. What's that? Return it to us after, please. Cause sure. Yeah. Knows who you are. And sure. We can make copies, and you can either pick it up at the town office, or one of us can try to get it to you. But that we, works. We can I pick it up at the town it. office. Sure. Oh, we'll sure. make copies and then leave it out front with Kelly. That so works. Or, or Pam, whoever. Sure. Grab it. Yeah. Thanks. Just, just to clarify, if I turn off the camp broke on the dark hill. You're the first right. Yes. First one on the right. First building. The old the Scott right. Hill residence. Calm down with, a lot with, since with then. Who? The old Scott Hill residence. It calmed mm -hmm. down a lot since then. Okay. Then. And then between you and Dart Hill uh, is Sadie Tetro? Actually, no. I'm Sadie. <laughs> and what happened was I purchased the property for like ten thousand something dollars, and then I ended up paying taxes out my fanny after that. Okay. And I just turned it over to my son and his wife. So. So they actually own it. I'm just. We're just waiting for the taxes to start reading. Uh, okay, so then we're talking about those two parcels. Yes. We're going to connect okay. the two. Okay, the big connect. They're going to connect the two properties well, together. I'll talk so there for me. I actually I'll have the paperwork. It. Yeah. Um, it's already in order. I'm just waiting for the lawyer to. Yeah. That's fine. I just want to clarify. Yeah, I didn't even there, think about that. Thanks for bringing that up for sure. There's there's two culverts you might want to be looking at. One that goes on there probably. No, one, one the back's right? fine. We already there's discussed it. Two of them, though. We might just look at them while they're there. Well, I think, yeah, we need to look into it and we'll see what we can. We really appreciate it. Do we have, do we have any information from the prior owner on any permission? No, I mean, you can tell the thing's been there easily 20 years because look at the pavement over it. And, yeah. But no, I don't have any. I just did. I was just asking if we had any information in regards to the prior owner. If, like sometimes, like I was telling you about, if you want to put a culvert in, usually you get some sort of permission. And that can be a verbal right. permission, it can be written permission. Um, so we didn't know if maybe the town had permission before they, or You can look at the not, deed, but or, they may not have years ago. You yeah. didn't have to. You just, I think they, right. just, well, they may have okay. to, did it. But All I know is they used to stuff campers and school buses in there oh, years God. ago so, just to live in. So I don't honestly so know what happened way back then. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nightmare. That's neither here or there, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah Google Maps <laughs> agree. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but. No, we appreciate you buying it and fixing it up. Yeah, and yeah.
Well, it's um, going to look good when they get done, but I mean, right now it's like we need to get that fixed so that they can continue working on other stuff that they need to. Sure. It costs money for everybody. Absolutely. Awesome. Yep. Just leave that with us before you leave, and um, and we'll get copies to the board members so they can look. Thank and you for getting us in early too. Cause sure. I told yeah. Them, I says, at my meetings at the, in Royalton, we sit there forever. Yeah. Well, there's no need to sit in here any longer. <laughs> I told them. I said, you've never been to one. I said, I've been to a couple. <laughs> All right, appreciate All right. you coming in. Are we good to go? We can go now. I was Thank telling you them this really last time I've been up in this place is when I was a child. Thank Have a good evening. Have a good night. All right. And now we will open it up to public comment. So if there's any <clears throat> public comment period, if there's anything that's not on the current agenda this evening that anybody wants to bring up, now is the time to do so. And Doug will time it at three to five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Leonard's on Zoom. Yeah. I just have an update question. Update on the constable. Where did this stand on that? Well, we're, we will be talking about the constable as part of our budget discussion this evening. Mm, okay. End of discussion. Got it. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. As far as public comments are concerned, would it be, is there, is there an idea to be moving down on your agenda a little bit? Well, I think, I think it, it can be a tough one because, um, you know, the idea behind usually public comment is for somebody that has something on their mind, right, mm -hmm. um, to, to come to the meeting and be able to bring that to the board's attention early in the process and not have to sit through mm -hmm. a lot of business. Or wait two weeks. Yeah. Uh, however, it, it works the other way around. Sometimes it's better served at the back half of the meeting mm -hmm. too. So it's, that's what we were talking about earlier. It's kind of, regardless of where you put it, it, it can be positive and negative affecting the meeting. So um, I saw Doug's got Christmas lights up. One more. One more to and I see the lights on the railings of the bridge and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's Dietry really been, um, yeah. Doug, Doug has been doing it. Uh, Dietry and Kathy Day um, have really, I'm not who else I'm missing, but I know the three of you have been really going at it and, and getting it done. I know that they asked, uh, they want to do some on Fort Fortitude and I think um, the owner of Green Mountain Feed, so I think has agreed to maybe helping out with some power because there is no power there. Um, but you, I don't know if you've had other helpers, but <laughs> you guys have been doing a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks good. Thank you. Yeah. I think when are you turning them on? Thanksgiving? Uh, after. The day after? It's Friday. Yeah, it's Friday. Yeah, it'll be Friday. You got away. It was, it was awfully warm when you were putting those up this year. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. We should be doing it in July, so yeah. we're all set for later. Well, we, we can leave them up, though, this time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I said. Good yeah. for you. Well, thank all you. All right. Anything else, public comment? Hearing none, we will move on. So the first on the agenda this evening is to continue our discussion with the budget. So um, I had talked to Lindley today and Chris, and um, Chris had caught, which probably all you did except for I, I didn't, obviously, or would fix it. Under um, POL insurance, I had 40000 instead of four, which explained my number a little bit. I kept going back over it and over it, but I just don't think I could see it at that point. I'd looked at it too many times. So I put on your table the updated budget comparison report and the updated budget with only that correction made in it. So um, I'd answered other questions. But um, so I'm assuming you just want to start on the first page of revenues and go through and I can answer. Usually what we do in the past is instead of going line by line, we go page by page. So if somebody has questions, they can ask. Now the only pet questions. peeve I'm going to have right. is I don't mind back to back, but when you do back to back and flip. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh <laughs> that, that became very, very challenging. Oh, mine is single. <laughs> yeah, I guess I had I back to back and 
Oh, and then I would have to I'm flip it. I'm sorry, I didn't realize when I made the So copy. when I was putting my pages together, I was like, oh, oh upside down. And, oh, sorry, right. yeah. That, that's realize. about your printer settings, because mine, I printed my own. And so, oh, well, they printed know, it for me, so. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I printed theirs, so sorry. So this sent to Lindley, she'll print mine. Yeah. Okay, I'll fix it. I got you covered. It. <laughs> I will fix it, sorry about that. Um, so, obviously, um, where are you at, the revenue side? Yes, yeah, so we're going to start with the revenue page. Uh, you know, I yeah. do try to put notes. Sometimes they're as much for you as they are for me. Um, but does anybody have any questions on the revenues? I mean, I just saw that the town clerk's fees about $10,000 higher than we normally budget, but yeah. it looks like the actuals in the past have been higher than what we've budgeted. So well, is that... last year was due to COVID. The property changed hands like nobody could believe. I mean, mm -hmm. Pam was straight out. It, it was frankly just unheard of um and it's still the property sales are up so currently i we okay. have the actual of nine thousand six sixty eight. so i you know i asked pam how are you doing now and she's still busy so we just took that number and multiplied it out to come up with the 27.6 because property is still turning over but what's happening is inventory there's just not much property to sell mm -hmm. so you know, clerk fees are, are hard. It's okay. really, it's not driven by anything we do. Um, <clears throat> pool passes, I just stuck with what we had done in 2020. Obviously we didn't open last year. Then this last year we were open, but it was kind of a slower start. Um, so I'm trying to be optimistic with, with the um, 85, 75. Um, this last year we also didn't sell snacks. We didn't do, there's a couple things we didn't do because of COVID. So, um, Hopefully that changes next year. Uh, so yeah, some of the other stuff are just two year averages is what I tend to do, base it on some sort of reality. Um, there was another carrier added to the tower lease. So that's in there. I also noticed that you went from delinquent taxes, you went from 35 to zero. Right, so what's happening is, um, I, afterwards we talked about scaling it down every year and, and i just there's a zero here which obviously we had delinquent taxes but what happens is we change the way we record them with the accountant mm -hmm. so <clears throat> we could i could put that back i should have put well that i'm back just wondering like if to 30 but i know we've been talking about ratcheting it down well, because we we're have, collecting our taxes but and we're having a tax sale this year so we are definitely um i'm just wondering if maybe that would, maybe that would still be, fall into this current budget the tax sale Excuse right. me? The tax sale this year would still fall into the current. The one we have. Right, there, exactly. Yeah. And then, yeah. which means it's going to be less next year. Right. So maybe what yeah. we need to do is, I can take a look. Let me just take a look at this. Maybe this needs to be like 25. Let me look no, at the thinking, last Yeah, I was actual. thinking like cut it in half, like 20 yeah. or something. Yeah, because let it, me take a peek. and Because the way you had it right now was the revenues dropped by. Yeah, exactly. So I just need to go back and look at the number. Like four Obviously, or 5,000 or something. Yeah, and I'm also slowing <clears throat> on the interest. Um, oh, I slowed on the penalty because people are paying their taxes. Yeah, We're collecting. that makes sense. Yep. And same thing with interest. I backed down uh -huh. that number as well. So let me just double check these two. I can go back historically and just double check. Double check. And too, with the change of the three-day giving people the three-day window that also is going to change for interest and penalty. Mm -hmm. um, as far as um, admin reimbursement for solid waste, sewer department, and water department, those are based in reality. I take, a, I take a percentage of each person's job that they do for maybe water, sewer, solid waste and allocate a number to it. And <clears throat> that's why, that's where those numbers are. They're not, they're a percentage of somebody, you know, people's salary, so. Um, all right, you want to go to public works? Yeah, so everything else there looks good, but. So um, as I was talking with Therese oh, right now, talk about. she has budgeted for, I don't want to say the most extreme, but of the higher end of the retirement extreme. Right, now, so. We're, we're hoping that that comes back more closer to the 15% rather than the 22%. Well, right now, we're but, at, currently we're at 19.5%. That's what the state hit us with. That's why we started yeah. the year with this $30,000 in the hole between all of our funds because mm -hmm. we normally had 13.84 um, is what we were paying. And I always budgeted 15% as a little bit of a cushion. Obviously, mm -hmm. I had no clue they were gonna go from 13.84 to 195 so luckily this year in public works, we're gonna be able to make it out because some of the people didn't need family plan insurances. But, so I budgeted to go from 19.5 to 22 because, um, yeah, I don't have a crystal ball. 
I, Kirk White um, has been helpful. He was, he'd reached out to Beth Pierce at the state, who's the state treasurer. Beth was supposed to have a meeting that got canceled and then he was gonna follow up with her because we did get the, I heard, saw the VMERS, Vermont Municipal Retirement, which we're not part of. So I emailed Kirk and said, hey, they got their numbers, where are ours? And he said, oh, I was gonna reach out. So I haven't heard back from Kurt if he had another conversation with Beth Pierce yet mm. to see what this is gonna look like and even if she's even gonna swear to Because that seems actual. to be the largest, like normally we're talking yeah. about um, mm. health insurance, well, you know, but the biggest swing in our budget right now has been the retirement. Well, and of course too, because last year we budgeted 15% and then we had to go to 19.5 in actuality, so I, I don't even know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, so hence why I said, well, all right, I'm gonna err on the high side and go to 22. Our premium increase for health insurance was only 0.10, which was yeah. great. Um, so nothing, so I don't know if you have anything under public works. Um, no, I thought, uh, I, don't know, I, I thought it was all fine other than, yeah, got my fingers crossed that the retirement numbers will come down so that we can better take, you know, we can take that money mm -hmm. and put it somewhere else. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yes, I increased ditching um, by five grand. I want to get more done because Chris and I, um, Alan, Chris, myself and Alan Patton, met with um, Jim Gray of A&R. So obviously we, we pay for our municipal stormwater permit every year. And what comes with that is you have to have a percentage of your roads brought up to a standard by the end of 2022. And people forget that Bethel, ha and they are looking at class four roads, and Bethel has over 80 miles of road. We maintain about 65 miles. So um, I'd like to see, to get more done. So that's why, yes, there's five grand there. Obviously I'm hoping that there's gonna be some savings in retirement, but um, the more we can get done, you know, the better off it is. I just had a meeting today with Rita from Two Rivers. We do take advantage of every grant that we can get. We're writing better connections, or better connections, not better connections in the brain, better roads grants, as well as grants and aid. Grants and aid we just did, um, we've done Hooper Hollow, we've done Sanders, we're gonna put Christian Hill out to bid. The next one is gonna be a sections on Findlay Bridge Road because we paid for um, Two Rivers to do a whole road erosion and culvert inventory. Mm -hmm. And they've done that and that's what you use for data. And they pick out these segments and if they're hydrologically connected, so if your segment tubs into a river somewhere, uh, culvert needs to be a certain size, you have to look at ledge removal, tree removal, and they stone line, they force you to stone line the ditches. Um, as a side note, the state doesn't side, road line, uh, stone line their own ditches, but they make us do it. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, so in order to adhere to this grant, so the next piece that we picked out today was for, um, was like Findlay Bridge, and then we're also gonna write a better grants road, better, roads grant for a piece of right road. So what we're doing is we're taking the high priority items from this inventory and that's what we're trying to fix. So, um, is there a particular place? On the yes, there's know? certain segments, um, that I, I can't describe to you right now as I would have to have my book in front of me, but there's certain sections and they were chosen, you know, by two rivers. They came out and looked at every road and did an inventory. So I have a, a book this thick and it shows every segment I think they do them in like 328 yard segments and they put them in, it's either red, green, yellow, either they don't meet so they're fail or they're meeting or they're almost meeting standard. So for Findlay, there was any sections that were in red or what we're gonna pick up. And it's $30,000 of work with a $5,000 match. So that's good money right there. I'm, all, I'm asking because that area- I can't tell you is what I'm saying. The area in front of Ray Straits House. Yeah, I know where it is, yep. And under the railroad bridge. Yep, I know the first part is that right after the bridge. continues to be a perpetual problem with uh, yeah. drainage and- I do know that one piece is pretty close to right near the bridge when you come off, just because when Reed and I were looking at it today, that segment, um, we were looking at, and I know it's right near the beginning, right Every there. Time but they, where the other segments yeah. are, I, I can't swear yeah. to. Yeah, no, I was just curious about that particular yeah. yep. one. Yeah, that is on there. That was in Everybody that drives Finley Bridge crosses that 
Yeah, it's true. <laughs> well, honestly, and that's the way I try to triage, and that was the thing I said to Rita today. We obviously, there's a place on Macintosh, there's on Trout Brook, which Trout Brook has three or four houses, but, you know, I'm like, all right, Finley Bridge is heavily trafficked, so I said to her, let's pick Finley Bridge. So you're trying to triage where I'm going to get the most bang for my buck. So um, so that's some, so that's why I, I increased the ditching. I, I also I want to get more done. So and, aside from these grants, we put this out to bid. And with that storm water, the, so the state understands that each town has a certain percentage of the roads that don't meet standards, right? Right. And what they want to see, according to the A&R guy, was 10 to 15 percent. Yeah. 10 yeah. to 15 percent of your roads that don't meet standards is what you have to do a year. Isn't that crazy? Um, so I couldn't tell you what our, how many miles of that it is, but they want to see 10 or 15 yeah. percent. So if we have 15 miles and they want to see us, you know, do a mile a year, um, yeah. fix it up. So they were, the good news was there's some sections that, so her, uh, Rita and Pete from Two Rivers have been falling back to look at sections because there was some stuff that they missed. So obviously it throws it off. And she, you know, the good point, the conversation we had today is this is done by, um, uh, uh, A and R, and um, I think it's A and R. Um, so, anyways, and they don't talk to each other. So the standards that VTrans is putting out, and then the people who are dealing with the water issues, aren't always on the same. And she said, we have said to them repeatedly, you guys need to talk to each other because you're saying you want one thing, and you guys are saying another standard. So. She told me today, look, don't turn yourself inside out because she said, we're waiting for this thing. We think the standard is going to change. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, and she said, the other thing is too, I said, well, state statute says we don't have to maintain certain things on class four roads. She said, exactly. She said, so that's one of the problems is a and R is not, you know, a and R is not reading. The statute is clear about what we have to do, but now they're setting this bar a little high. But the other good things that are going to come in this are anything that we have ditched that we have graded. Some of the roads just need to be graded and crowned. So once we've done that, it, it takes it off the list. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, you see it and you're like, oh, you know, oh my God, this is daunting. Yeah, right but um, so that's why, so yes, I did add $5,000 more to this. Teresa, I wanted to ask on, under that uh, area of the engineering mm -hmm. service, services, is yeah. that for a specific type of engineering? Like you have on the side the note, uh, 15 hours. But it, was that for something in oh. particular? Yeah, so for, yes, it actually is. Um, I had uh, Ryan from Slack, you guys all know, has, hel has helped do some of the road commissioner work. And we were having this conversation. What we've done in the past with that 15,000 is we were doing stormwater. Remember, we, we spent, we set aside 15,000 a couple years ago thinking we had to engineer some stormwater. Then we end up putting it in the ground. So when we did livery in Avon, we did it on the fly. So that's what that money had been used for in the past. But right now what I want to do is get work with an engineer to engineer, I don't care if it's a half mile of like dart, fix, like, pick like the worst or the steepest and have them engineer a piece so that then we have a plan. How should we build this road? How should we engineer? And then we can reuse that plan all over town by saying, okay, we've paid for this. So how we go about and do this is a standard we could use for the future for all RFPs and bid work would say this is what we're going to do and we had it engineered so that's what my thought was Lindley I was thinking okay. eh, you know 15 hours at this amount of money and you know yeah well like, up until we did the storm water I don't the engineering services might not even been an item yeah oh I think I, we added it there like right. three or four years ago just for or, the storm or, yeah right. we were talking about the water and yeah, well, and I knew why that or else it had nothing in there. Yeah. But then I wasn't sure what the 15 hours for this budget. Yeah. I was just was trying to think how long is it going to take them because they basically be re revisiting a VTrans standard because VTrans can give you a cut. They can say, okay, this is if you look at the mm -hmm. better, you know, roads manual or some of the things that we look at. Um, they could look at that, but I want someone to actually take a peek at that and and, and lay something out for us. So I'm thinking, all right, 125 bucks an hour hours maybe that's enough how how does the 30,000 for the stormwater um, master plan yeah that's coming like how does that play into this or is that in this current budget cycle um, it doesn't play into it at all okay. because what's gonna happen is as part of the better connections grant we have thirty thousand dollars into developing a stormwater master plan so what that's going to, we already have our match for that grant there was no match for the stormwater piece right. so we'll tackle that in a future um, somehow in a future budget because by the time we get through it they create a master plan
then they're saying it's going to open us up because once we do this master plan, we should be um, eligible. What I was looking right. for eligible for more grant money. So right now, I have no idea what that's going to look like. And you're like. seeing that as separate from this engineering. So um, I'm yeah, well, because things. yeah, because there's no yeah. cost for us to do this in this master plan that they're doing right now is nothing to us. There's yeah. no match. So this, so I'm not looking for anything right now because I'm not going to see that until into the budget cycle. That you know we will be into the summer before we ever see that thing, and then we'll be able to lay out. Then we'll know what the projects are because right now I wouldn't even have an idea. And they're supposed to flush out the engineering on three to five projects. And Tim and I are thinking, well, if we could do three and really flush them out, mm -hmm. so we'd be in a better position to just go in and implement. Right. Um, so it's it'll so really that will come into play in, in, in a future in the next budget cycle. That's what I think. Yeah. Further out. Yeah. I okay. mean, if something came up in the meantime and there might be a match, then we'd have to look at it from the capital roads. Right. But I don't really know right now. Yeah. Uh, so, but, thank you. Yeah, no. So, so you're trying to think about it, but it's so you have the ERAF money in there for Pinello. I do. So mm -hmm. this is ew, that whole Pinello. So I, look, I I don't know what this is going to cost us. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have the engineer tonight. Thank God, and we're gonna get someone on board to figure this out. I don't, I believe that the FEMA, the estimate, the scope and cost that they give us is way low after having a discussion with um, the engineers on site and talking to um, some folks about it because of the bridge standard to which you have to build for. Um, because when you build a bridge, <clears throat> there's two different standards. One is, and it's H something or other, which doesn't really matter, but the standard that we scope for is the higher end because, and one of the engineers said, well, the town could choose not to build the bridge to that engineering level. But what it means is the bridge itself on the base is stable, but if somebody hits the railing and goes through, then you didn't build to the roads and standards on which you adopt it. And I'm like, no way, because we know they're putting log, gonna put log trucks over it. And so my thinking is how, we would be opening ourselves up to a liability if we didn't design to the right standard. So I came, I, I'm thinking we're looking at a higher number. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, but I think that what FEMA has scoped it out was low. And then there was conversation there about we had been planning to do this modular bridge, this longer 90 foot span, thinking we could get further and higher up and away from the river. And then I, I, a couple of the engineers were like, well, um, you know, if FEMA wants us to do abutments and then the bridge is shorter, and I'm like, oh, this is going to cost us. So the ERAF is. So it's over a two-year period. From what I'm your saying budget we now. split it. I'm saying we pay half now and half later. Plus, by the time it's done. Um, well, the tough thing we're going to have is with the extra 1.7 billion that's coming to the state of Vermont for roadway construction, mm -hmm. you're going to see. A lot more projects, which means the contractors are going to be picky and choosy, mm -hmm. yep. and yeah. you know, and prices are going to go up. Not to mention, materials are up right now. So I mean, mm -hmm. every it's just it's kind true. Of a, <clears throat> so it's kind of not a, a perfect. So it's a hard storm situation. Right but the good thing is, this will be the last one. Um, this is the last. This is actually the last project in this state for DR 445. So, but this is just where we ended up. So um, I say, would we put the ERAF over two years? At least we're paying for it. We're not. You know, gonna borrow for it. It'll, you know, will. Mm -hmm. And if it's less, it's less, and hallelujah. But, but I, I suspect that it's uh, penny wise and pound foolish to go with a lower standard or a lower. I mean, I, you know, it's a bridge to one house, but we know they're logging, and it, it concerns me about the liability. And I'm not sure FEMA's gonna go for it because every year we sign the paper saying that we're gonna build to the bridges, to the roads and standards. So. I think that's a slippery slope to, um, you know, but it's something we'll flush out more with the engineer um, when we hire, you know, VHB comes on board. It'll be a conversation we'll have, and I just need more data from them to see what exactly is the difference, and we did make them go forward with the full design, to, saying this is what the, it's going to cost us to go to the high design, mm -hmm. and see. I, I think it may be even a question. Um, the challenge is, is we, and we <clears throat> had a very lengthy discussion, I don't know, two years ago here 
But, but three. I mean, you have a, a million dollar bridge that goes to one. Twenty nineteen, Chris. It was one house. So it was you know, in twenty nineteen. So we had discussions about, you know, should the town be responsible for the bridge or should it be a privately owned? You know, because mm -hmm. if you go up through there, a lot of the bridges are privately owned bridges. Yeah. You know, so we had that discussion, but. In order to get the FEMA money to temporarily do it, then you have to kind of make a commitment that you are going to follow that procedure. Yeah. No, so I, I, yeah, my, my only concern is that you, uh, we could do some enough to quote get by, and we might wind up paying more at the end oh, of the sure. day because of. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, if if the state would give us that bridge, we'd walk away right What's now. What's going to happen is we wouldn't even take FEMA money. I'd say forget it. We pay for the bridge that was in right now. We, I have begged the state to you sell can see that the, the way and, the uh, path of water, the way the water comes through the air, and you can see all the erosion that's happening mm -hmm. uh, on the upstream and on the house side. Is I mean, good chances you're going to build a bridge there, and 20 years from now we're going to be building a new bridge there. Yeah. So the current it's not going to be there. Yeah. The and current, the span yeah. of the bridge every time we have a flood event. <laughs> Changes by like 10 extra feet. Well, so a bridge that used to be 60 feet is now 100 feet, feet, you know? Yep. And the thing about the H, H study is they proved that we need to push it downstream a little, which changes our access from Gilead. But it's true, it, it rises yeah. it up. But yeah. yeah, if the state would sell us the bridge we had now, oh, that'd we be wouldn't nice. even take FEMA money. That'd be the way to call go. It. But they won't. I have egged us. And the guy was retiring from the state. Why don't we just buy so a, I call, call the company maybe and just well, buy one of their steel bridges and. So we said to, well, we talked about that, and then they were telling me now the cost of, you know, steel and this and that, but I even talked to Hobie, the guy who's retiring, like, what do you care? You're retiring. <laughs> Sell it to me. You know, right. like, let's go. Right. He just, kept that thing for 30 years, but right. he, no. They just screwed us in they, the water thing. They can make it up here. They want it back, so they you know. So they're yeah. saying we, we have to give it back. Yeah, so um, that'll be over two years then, two years commitment yeah. there. Okay. So um, it looked like the fire department wasn't really changing. Oh, so the cemeteries much. too. We're going to put that out a bit. No, the, so I think they the were fire good. was pretty good. I think this is the first time in a while that they don't have any grant type matching stuff going on. Do they have anything at the fire department? No, I talked to. I had a meeting with Gary and um, Dave Aldrigetti the other mm -hmm. day, and and no, because what happens is they got turned down for their other AFG because they don't their call volume doesn't support it. They got no. that nice grant, and they're still looking for. They still need to mm. get their refill tank, um, but right now um, it's tough. And of course, everybody has a need, but when your call volume is low, it kind of mm. throws you out early in the right. process. So the constable, I just want to explain my this math here. So in the first column on the top, you can see I wrote one full-time, no part-time. The last iteration of the budget I came in with, per your request, one full-time constable, um, plus 100 hours of overtime, plus a part-time constable that worked 10 hours a week. And then um, Paul, I talked to Paul about it. He came in. We had a conversation about it. And he was like, well, what would it look like if it was just one full-time person? So 40 hours a week um, and some OT, what would it look like? So that's the first column. The second column where it's under notes, I have in staying, we stay at the status quo, which is we've budgeted for 20 hours a week and Hope we can get it because at this point, obviously, we're not. Plus, it includes a speed cart for eighty-eight hundred dollars and two more flashing speed signs, so we could install one like on River Street and somewhere else. So you can see the difference. The one full time is one hundred and forty-one thousand five forty-five, and then the twenty hours a week speed cart, two flashing signs, is fifty-eight thousand one hundred six. So that's why they're kind of, I wasn't really sure how else to. And then how, how we, and then just, and it probably will answer some questions that anybody has out there, but how we came to this, well, a couple of things. When you're doing the budgeting, you can start in different places. So like some boards will say to the town manager, okay, you need to keep the budget within X, right? And then after you do that, then we add or subtract from it. In this case, we kind of just said, what are the wants out there right. or what makes sense let's put it all in the budget and then we'll start picking in you know okay this doesn't make sense or we need to add here or subtract from there um and how the constable piece came about was ide in an ideal situation and talking with our uh, community over time ideally we'd like to see 20 hours a week of 
of patrol, of or patrol um, education, visibility in the community. And the challenge that we've had over the last couple of years, especially the last two years, has been um, a couple of things. The first part is, in order to do 20 hours worth of work in the field now, it may take 40 hours worth of commitment because of, you know, if you pull somebody over for speed, you might have to go to court. Uh, God forbid you pull somebody over that's drunk because that might be, you know, a whole day's worth of paperwork and then have to go to X, Y, Z court dates. So, so there's a lot of um, paperwork time behind the scenes because you can't just say, well, you just have to do that in your own time, right? I mean, you have to pay for all the, the red tape that comes with things now. Um, and then to convolute things is we used to have a pretty good gig in Bethel up until like three years ago. Where, yeah. where Hancock and Rochester and Bethel, we all shared one constable. So the constable was a full-time constable. He just spent you know, a certain amount of hours in each community. And we shared one, no, actually it was two cars, right? We had one, Rochester had a car, yeah, but Hancock didn't have one or right, something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had a system there of all of us pulling together and it was a really good gig. And then the gentleman went to, um, Windsor. Windsor County um, for a full-time gig. Um, so now what we've been left with is it's very challenging to find anybody qualified to want to just take on 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week of service. Um, so what we've had, we did have, we got lucky again, we had Oscar for a period of time mm -hmm. where he was splitting his time between Killington and Bethel, mm -hmm. and that worked out really well. And I think we saw in the community we had really good present. Well, the two big things that we had going on at that time was we had a lot of speeding in, in around the village. When I say that, from like the school down down through, and we had uh, a higher visibility of drug-related issues in the town. Like you clearly could see them coming out of buildings, and you know, and the state police didn't want any. To, to help us. So Oscar did a really good job of combating that uh, for a period of time. Of course, just like anything, as soon as a full-time gig comes available, he went to take a full-time gig. Mm -hmm. So, and nothing against the individual that we have now, but now we're back into the situation of to fill just 10 hours or 20 hours a week, we're either going to get somebody that can't quite devote their time to us, which is kind of what's happening right now. Yeah. Or you have to devote your resources to say we're going to pay you a full time gig, right? Because Oscar to, works to get some sort of yeah. work out of it. So Oscar's full time in Royalton, and Justin is full time with the Rutland County. So obviously their loyalty has to lie with their main agency. So if there's overtime or someone's sick or vacation, they have to cover you know their home base basically. And then so we've been trying to get you know between the two of them. Um, figure it out and it's been tough I and mean, Oscar will do in the mornings for a couple hours sometimes on the way to his shift in Royalton or a couple right. hours on the way home or whatever and, and it becomes tricky and um, because the goal doing it. And, and also too you need to remember is the a constable has to be a part-time certified that's a state law now they have to have been through at least the part-time Academy so hmm. um, so currently um, so you have to have you know police officers and and um, and doing it, and uh, so, anyways, this so we were the, trying to go through the calls. we were trying to go through the exercise of. What it seems like? it seems though right now, in order to get somebody that is qualified that is going to put the good time into the community and be the face of the community and um, and be visible, that maybe we would have to look for more full time thing. And what does that look like on paper? Like how much mm -hmm. does it cost? Um, because it's not just as simple as paying somebody whatever. X amount of dollars an hour. There's the as we as we know. There's retirement and healthcare and workers comp and and then if you have somebody more full time, then there's more money when it comes to yeah. fuel wear and tear on you know a lot of other things yeah. that the happen. So thing too is I know is I did not raise the ticket revenue in here. Obviously, you would see an increase in ticket revenue. However, just to be clear, there is no quota. State law, that's illegal. We cannot say to an officer, you have to generate X amount of tickets. That's, you could say, hey, you know, we want you to make your presence known or we want you to make some contacts, but you cannot say that. 
Um, you can't, you know, and that was never our intention. We've never done that. We never talked about that. Um, would you see an increase in revenue? Of course you would. It would just make sense because you'd have a police officer, you know, pulling more people over. But that's nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but in this iteration, I, I didn't touch the revenue. Um, so, so yeah, so this is what it looks like. Also, too, you know, people don't, we get a ton of phone calls. I mean, VSP is strapped. People do not want to be police officers. And the VSP very easily can have one person on for a huge section of the state. So it's not they don't want to help us, they can't. They're also short-staffed. So we are getting phone calls for whether it's not just dogs, but we get a lot of civil complaints. Somebody may be having a domestic issue and they need a police officer or constable to be there. Well, maybe they go home to get their stuff to be safe. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of that. We have phone calls like that that need to be done. We have civil service processes. Um, Oscar, Justin can serve for people um, if they need to serve someone, whether it's divorce papers, court papers, whatever, um, that sort of thing. And people calling about drugs, saying that we're having a problem with drugs on our road. We really want a police officer. When are they going to be on duty? And Or they want more targeted you or, know, traffic enforcement. Or trash dumping. Or, so, you know, yeah, <laughs> trash <laughs> had a dumping thing is a too. big one. So uh, I think what people don't realize is how many phone calls and emails we get on the town level, people wanting service, basically wanting you know, some assistance. And, and, and it's yeah. hard. We always refer them, obviously, if it's an emergency, go to state police, if, we, you know, if Oscar or Justin are on. And we do whatever we can to get people help you know, when they need it. Um, but, it, you know, it's difficult. I know Oscar and Justin field phone calls when they're on their other jobs, too, so it's... Two, yeah, two questions, or two comments were made last meeting that I think are particularly appropriate. Uh, one is, uh, are we spending the money in the best way to solve the problem we have? Uh, for example, the speeding um, uh, coming into town on 107. Uh, is it better to increase enforcement or to put up signs and even add a sidewalk, et cetera, to make it safer along that stretch without having to, without putting the money into law enforcement? And, and the second was similarly and then restated with the notes from the EIC, the Equity and Inclusion Committee, about whether for domestic abuse, domestic issue, for example, are the police or constable, is that the best way to respond right. to a domestic disturbance? And I mean, those are two really, really important questions that I think we need to, uh, to ask. What do we get for the extra bucks? Mm. Uh, is yeah, so I asked, so I did ask the state about 107, and they said they would not pay to put flashing lights in there, but I could certainly write, request a permit and, and pay to put the lights in, and they would let us do that, but obviously they won't install them. I question, because I don't understand, and I don't know the data, when people say sidewalks help with speeding, people are flying down Church Street, and that has a nice sidewalk and is in the middle of the town, so I'm not, I just don't get that. Someone would have to explain it's, that no, to the me. The sidewalk but, doesn't help with speeding. Helps with getting the pedestrian off the road. Oh, I see. Getting, oh, okay. Oh, well, thank you. That makes more because sense. Because they don't have to walk their dogs in the highway. Highway, of course. Yeah, that makes right. sense. That's the, that was how I understood. Oh, okay. well, that makes sense, Gene. I didn't. I was. I kept thinking, it, how is it's this? It's not thing? about. It, it doesn't slow people. It's more down. about pedestrian safety than when, slowing. But it becomes an okay. issue of, of public safety for yeah. the people who use. Oh, thanks. And to, yeah, to answer your question, I think ideals. The ideal situation is to have a combination of all. Right. A combination of oh, sure. warning of I'm a driver and I'm going too fast, and th there is a presence in the area that if I go by that speed cart, even though you know that I could get pulled over, there's a you know because you look at like I always take Woodstock for a good example, right? When you drive through Woodstock, there's all these on every main artery of Woodstock, they have speed carts. But it's not just like I'm driving by a speed cart and I'm just 
seen how fast I'm going. Because you know that they have somebody in Woodstock that's on 24-7 that could be around that next corner that like to pull you over, right? So, so you're more apt to go through Woodstock at 20 miles per hour when it's 25, you know what I mean? Like you pop through Woodstock. <laughs> where I, I have the feeling that the challenge with us would be is I think a speed cart, you put it out there, it costs money, right? You put it out there, but over a period of time, if people don't see any enforcement, it's just gonna become, well, I mean, it's, I'm just gonna do my 40 anyways and mm -hmm. there's 25 because I know nobody's gonna pull me over. speed signs up by the school. You know, yeah, I and I think we're starting to see that again, especially mm -hmm. the worst stretch normally is, is the Pleasant Street stretch mm -hmm. through the school because it hits 50 out there. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, the challenge is it's not that the constable that we have isn't a good constable, it's that he's not able to give us the proper hours of service that we are used to seeing and our traveling public are used to seeing. So, like he comes in on odd shifts, you know, he might be here on Saturday evening or, or Sunday evening or something. Right, or 5 a.m. on but, Monday But, you know, morning people are like, before yeah. they didn't know when Oscar was here. He might be here for a couple of days during the daytime and one in the evening. And now we don't, you know, I mean, how often do you see the constable driving through town? I, not very, not when I'm up, you know, yeah, so it's yeah. like, but, but, <laughs> True. you know. Where's, where's the data on that? I mean, that makes all kinds of sense. Well, I think the data is pretty common sense. I mean, it's well, uh, like you're saying, it's, maybe if you just put a sign out there, people are going to do what they want to do over after a period of time. Yeah, well, I, I only, so from so, my own personal experience, yeah. I see one of those signs, I slow down. But oh, I, yeah, that's, right, yeah. me too. Now, we could probably... I mean, so the, there's a... a yeah. In the interest of time, yeah. yeah, I think we can end this issue pretty quick. I know there's a million, million um, opinions on how we police things and do things in our town or communities or other places. I think looking at the numbers, that there's no way that we can justify eighty to ninety thousand dollars worth of extra budget money to have a full-time person on. Now, I don't think that solves our issue because we're still going to have an issue of, you know, having some presence there. However, I do think it's an it's a good amount of money that I think the citizens of Bethel need to understand that maybe to do things more right that this is what that investment may cost us. You know, maybe not this year, maybe next year, maybe another year. Um, because the days of just finding that person that wants to come in and grab 10 hours, because like Teresa's saying, now they have to go through all the classes. It's not like, you know, um, those days may be over, you know. It, so then our choice might be a full-time officer in town or a no-time officer in town. But each one comes with its own set of you know, issues. Because we, we looked through. at contracting, was it last year? Or the year yeah, we've looked before, through the year before. Windsor County Sheriff's. We talked about maybe state joining police. on with the town of Randolph. We looked at the state police. Yeah. I mean, and those numbers are. are high. I mean, it was, I think we were yeah. looking at what, like 40 some odd thousand? Upper 40. For nothing. Upper 40s, for, 40s yeah. for, for 20 hours for a week minimum. to contract with the state police, yeah. which is And what that didn't take at. care of. Then we have the dog uh, animal enforcement mm -hmm. on top of that. So Yeah, yeah. which they couldn't touch. And, um, so and it's hard, I think, too, with, with Bethel, um, you've been very lucky that you live right next to the state police barracks. So I think that VSP has done very well by Bethel for a long time. Back when but, they were fully staffed. Yeah, but I yeah. can tell you the VSP wants us to come up yeah. with somebody. You know, they're just like, look, we're, you know, they're... Well, we were lucky because we had, we had two either. troopers that lived in our community at one yeah. point. Yeah. Well, so we had issue. that local presence all the time. If you look at the state police daily press releases, the drop-off in this area is just, <clears throat> there's nothing there anymore. Because they're elsewhere. They're yeah. out in Rutland, yeah. they're you know, yeah. up north. Yeah. And you if very they, rarely see anything from this area. Yeah, and they'll call. If VSP is, you know, they'll call to see if Oscar or Justin are on so that they, mm -hmm. and they'll say, mm -hmm. you've got to call, you know, the constable's mm -hmm. on to deal with him. So. But this but may be, they, Teresa and I were talking today, and we'll bring it up at the, um, the town meeting warning piece of it of maybe this might be a piece that we seek some information during town meeting day from from our citizens on what would they like to see done going forward, you know. Um, because I think I think the days of the part-time constable was kind of in the past, right? to find somebody 
qualified to do the work that wants to do the work. Um, yeah, I get a, a great, I agree with you, Kurt. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, just a question. Have you seen any, have you heard about any reduction of like speeding through town with that new, the new signals that you put out? I haven't heard anything. I, I mean, I always slow down whenever I see them. I, I think, but that's just me. I, yeah, I do think that there's some a faction of people who probably do, but no, I, I don't have any data on how much it's worked to slow people yeah. down. I mean, I think. Those, those little think, boxes have the data on yeah, the speed. The, the other ones we had. had yeah, it. I don't know if I don't think I don't know if these do either. And, and the other ones had a print off that we could get. Yeah. I mean, it was hard to understand the information, but yeah, they had a print off. And, and frankly, it's it's difficult too because there's always two schools of thought, right? Some people go as fast as they can just because they want to see what the number says, and then other people do. I don't think these are data holders, and it's hard to do much with it anyways. Because I mean, we all know. I mean, I think first thing in the morning is tricky. We have employees that are out that walk first thing in the morning and certainly Church Street, Maine. So I don't know, Leonard. I, I, I like to think that they're a deterrent for people. I and know I every day, and I'm honest, it feels to me like more of the people are slowing down. Yeah. That's just the feeling I get as I'm driving through and there are lots of cars going through. Yeah. It feels like more people are heeding to the speed limit in that area. Yeah. I don't know. I'd like to see them too at all the, you know, I'd like to see them at all the entrances of the town. I'd originally had three of them in here, but I was like, oh, I'm never going to go for three. Well, I know so. by, the, by the school in the morning, there's a lot of congestion and vehicles there anyway, yeah. so it just naturally slows everybody down yeah. going through there. But at 6.30 in the morning, the sheriff had one this 7 o'clock in the morning, it's a very different story. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, yeah. And especially like, well, yeah, this time, and in the evening, they yeah. the lion. Yeah. The other thing too is if 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 we cannot if we continue to not be able to get the coverage we need with the constables we have, we can also look at you know we could reach out to the Windsor County Sheriff and see. But I mean, it's it's pricey. Mm -hmm. You you know cut what you have, but you might at least have a reliable amount of hours you're going to get. Um, you know, I so I had a conversation with Oscar about it too, and talk to them but, but okay, I mean, so I would, you want to leave the 58106 and, and I mean I guess that's kind of where I'm at I mean I still think that you know there there may be some discussions had around the $15,000 with the signage mm -hmm. um, knowing the history of um, some of the town meetings that that's probably going to be an, an emphasis because 15000 is you know oh. three quarters of a penny on the tax rate just for one item so would you mind it? I, I have some other suggestions. If you if we're not going to do the full time, would you mind if I send you those things via email? No, please do. Okay. So yeah, the, well, the eighty eight hundred is the speed card, and then two more of the other signs. That's what the fifteen thousand eight hundred. And you're is. you're saying you were interested in a third speed sign? Why well, so was? They're about thirty five hundred each. Is that? Yeah, they're yeah. I I was getting a little greedy. I was going. <laughs> I was going well, in the, in the realm of thinking okay. the 140,000 versus right. 58, yeah, like I mean, 3,500 is only 10,000 hours. I know. Mm. I was like, mm. I, I, I did my first iteration. I was like, okay, three flashing signs and a speed car. And then I'm looking at the numbers and I went back through to go back and I'm like, oh, that's, that's just getting all great. I'm not sure I could get that. Byron has them all the interest. Yeah. That's what I'd yeah. like to yeah. see too. Yeah. I'd like they, to see them. They, like, they did they used to, but yeah. like within last this mm -hmm. last year. Yeah. Uh, uh, wherever, whenever you enter yeah. any one of them, they're, they're, they have. Yeah, and, and then the so we all in the speed cart too, so that we could move it. So if we have yeah, if it's targeted, mobile, then you can then, then it. that's it. Mm -hmm. That yeah, that. So we good with just keeping the twenty hour a week with the speed cart mm -hmm. in the budget for now? Do that route. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean I would, we'll have more discussions. I would definitely be interested in figuring out some way to get more information from the general public as to what they want, what they don't want, but also like I, l I love that the EIC outlined some ideas, but I mean, Teresa and I were kind of bouncing this around a little bit today that like some of what's hard is just putting ideas in front of us doesn't give us a way to move forward with any of it and we're too far into the budget cycle that there's no way to add any of this now as a, so it's like from here do we then 
do we, you know, go back to the ASC and task you with, okay, pick one or two models, do the research and get us some numbers by this date so we can entertain it in the next budget cycle right. and then use what we learned at this town meeting for public sentiment, integrate, you know, just like start pulling all these pieces like we mm -hmm. can recognize we can't make any drastic upheaval changes right. in right this now. cycle, but we could do more research, figure out what what the interest level is, and then also what options are, and then start putting those into the mix for the next mm -hmm. year's discussion. Right, right. I, I think that makes sense. I mean, that's what committees are for. I, we can't do all the research. I certainly can't. So that's what normally what committees do, is they do the research and come to you with thought out or some semi-flushed out ideas. Just giving me names isn't, I, I got nothing. I, but, I don't have time to I research would, I would like to see as part of that, uh, so, what's been, what are the crime rates? Uh, what is, what are the arrest records? What are the traffic control records over a period of time in terms of apprehensions or whatever? Uh, you know, request, yeah. request for assistance that we time from request to somebody on scene those kinds of, that kind of issue to inform us rather than, it feels to me like people are going too fast. Right. Yeah. Well, we gave you some What's data. Some data? I, I, I want some hard data okay. about whether we are seeing an increase in uh, need for police policing mm -hmm. that's not being met because of whatever, whatever reason. Yep. Oh. All righty. <clears throat> so we've agreed to the just to keep the 20 hours in there for now. But I think the important part <clears throat> too, Chris, so let's not glaze over it at all, is bringing it up to town meeting mm -hmm. and getting a feel because that's how this whole started. Well, I think that's back what years ago. Yeah. And to bring it back, you know, to the town meeting. Well, I think once we talk about the town meeting warning, that yeah, yeah, Teresa and I have an idea of maybe, you know, because we can go back and forth on what we think we should have on the warning, not on the warning, when, I, when I'm talking like the new things, as well as like constable slash police, you know, I think there's some opportunities for the select board to reach out to the citizens during town meeting day to say, you know, kind of like the Doyle poll, remember Doyle, like you'd put out like yeah. 10 things, you know, of what was going on, but not really being dealt with, you know, mm -hmm. and get some information back. Like, mm -hmm. you know, what do our citizens think? And if overwhelming they say one thing or the other then that task the select board to start working on that right um or some of these other issues that we still haven't completed on the warning my, type my, deal. my caution is that uh, these days what citizens think is not necessarily line up with reality and so i would like to see this these are the these this is the data folk well, we can probably get, yeah, I mean, I, and, and so I, I, we can probably I get like some to, data from whatever's in your packet. I mean, I mean we have data from the past on yourself. speed in the villages. We can get data from I, I the state wanna, police on I just want to call ensure time that we and, do that, and it's not just a what do you all think. I wonder if there's a creative way to do this, too. Um, and I don't know exactly, I'm forming this thought as I'm saying it, so bear with me. Um, but... Something more along the lines of like a community conversation. So that's what we were talking about. Well, and town meeting might not be quite the place for this, yeah, but we're just thinking. thinking outside of town meeting, like is it a Bethel University class that's co run by the town and the EIC, or uh, some experts are brought in to talk about alternative models that are successful in other communities and how they could apply within our community? And so spur the conversation in a, in a different way where it's not just an ask at town meeting but it's more um, it's more informational here are some alternatives how do you feel how could this apply and get it get it to be sort of more of a conversation than i, I feel like town meeting is one venue but it's also it's a tough venue because can be you're, you're not necessarily you're hoping you're getting cross section. Of yes. This. You're getting a cross section of the town by town meeting, but you're not getting every person. But one of the things that Rebecca told me about Sanborn Stone, which was very interesting, I'd never heard of it, um, 
in New Hampshire, they do this thing called New Hampshire Listens. There's a group that goes around, I guess, and helps facilitate um, these conversations, which is interesting. Right. I, I don't know if there's something in Vermont she wasn't aware, but it was interesting, nonetheless, um, mm -hmm. about it. So, um, all right, so the rec department, um, I got that, oh, I, the 10,000, or let me see, I forgot, I asked Ellie for a number. It's in there, 10 grand. So I couldn't remember. And um, so that budget is down a tiny bit, but um, not much. Um, can I, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I just want to um, understand repairs and maintenance. Yep. Um, do you do you anticipate um, what goes into repair and maintenance? That line. Um, what do you anticipate for repairs and maintenance? Well, I think last year we did, let's see, we stained the outside of the building last year yeah. and we put some flooring in. I think this year we have to, what was the other thing? We have to do something this year. But we also went around and tightened all the bolts in the pavilion oh, last okay. year, the, you know, the part that's added onto the skate there yeah. to the uh, okay. pool. And um, let's see, I'm trying to think, I'm missing. So They're talking oh, about that ADA compliance walkway. Plumbing. Um, yeah, it well, may, if the ADA compliance walkway is going as part of the skate park, that's yeah. not going as part of this. Um, yeah. So usually repairs and maintenance are something like if we have some plumbing issue or a toilet we need to fix. We had to fix a vent pipe last year. I think we still have to maybe install, I don't know if that V got installed on the roof so that it, the snow doesn't take out the pipe. Um, so. We try to do stuff like that. I think last year we put in, the reason it's high is there was an expense in there for Paul Feeney to move the okay. rec equipment, but we offset some of that money with a, with a grant revenue. So I know that we talked about um, if we have to seal the skate park, that's in there because I know that Dietri said we have to put some sealant on the skate park. Right, right. So that's in there. Um, right. But she did, we'd walk through it and she, because we were able to get quite a few things done this year, the flooring and things, um, yeah. we kind of, she felt like maybe we'd have a little savings there. Yeah, because it looks like, you know, looking at the town report, um, you know, you got 8000 and you've only spent, so there seems to be, you're doing some savings on there. Yeah. Every time. Um, I was just um, um, trying to um, uh, get a, a feeling for it because um, DJ did mention to the committee that she's not around all the time and she's concerned about the trash and the, and, and the trail and the, and, and the dog stuff and, mm -hmm. and I didn't know, I didn't know. Yeah. Um, if so we don't charge, the mowing comes out of a different budget so Richard comes down and does all the mowing and trimming that right. doesn't come out of the rec budget that we pay him comes out of the park. Oh, but yeah, the parks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the so we, the mowing for the okay. record comes out of the parks budget. Oh, okay. I guess just the way it was, where oh, it's okay. been. But, um, uh -huh. yeah, so, so, and usually you, I mean, people that are down there a lot of times do a good job, you know, cleaning up any trash. And we, okay. we talked about, well, you guys have a big sign on order, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it talks about the rules and pack in, pack right, out, right. And, and, and all that, yeah. And, and I just, uh, I just would, because um, recently, you know, DJ was concerned about that she's not, you know, because, you know, she's there at the summertime. Right, she's, exactly. She's uh, telling the committee, and, and we want to be aware mm -hmm. um, if, if there's some some maintenance or, 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 or things that, that um, yeah. Um, that we can, we can like, do so that she's not so handicapped that she's worrying about getting over there. Oh, that's nice. Because of the skate park yeah. is being used a lot, and um, you know, and and you know, we've been, I remember being um, over there. Yeah. Um, the, um, recently after Ford Festival, and I picked up a lot of trash. And, I bet. Like, you know, whatever. So. I know, I wish people would, you know, pack in, pack right, out. I know you right. have your sign, so, want order. and So we really picked up a lot of the low, you know, the bigger projects last year because we had a savings due to COVID. So we said, all right, right let's do the flooring and the okay. yeah. 
in the pool, you know, in the office area. Okay. We figured out a plumbing issue that we had um, because, as you know, <clears throat> that floor was right. crazy flooding. So we just right. ended up saying, forget right. it. We just shut the water right. off. And, right. and, and kind of people were happy because it ended up, you know, they're going right. to have, they had more room for changing. Yeah, because I know she went down from eight, eight, five to six. Five, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, because we were able to pick up some of those bigger okay. pieces, but okay. um, and I don't know of anything right now other than the, okay. than the skate park itself because we got the building stained. Um, okay. I have a couple trees to remove that if they come down, they're coming down on the fence. I got landowner permission where, where, where in between us and um, John Gifford. There's a couple tall trees right there that if they come down, they're on our property, but between us and we have to access via his property. And he yeah, said we John, could. Um, he's first going up Sand Hill, that big brick house. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if they come oh, down, okay. they're gonna come down on the fence. So okay. there's, that's the other, I knew there was one thing, tree removal, we have to do a couple oh. there. Oh. Um, and just waiting for Justin Ford to come in, but we did get permission from John Gifford to go in and do it but we you know so we did yeah. pick up some and, and yeah, like I said it includes the skate park maintenance because we got to seal that thing okay. so we we have been here or I have been hearing occasionally that the pool needs some major yep work yep. Uh, it does. and what if anything is being addressed or are we putting that off until it becomes you have to do it, and you should have done it a long time ago. Well, right now we have put, a, we've thrown up for a number because we didn't really, we're working on getting contractors together to come up with a price. We put $100,000 in the REC capital plan to, to address pool needs because what needs to happen is between the pavil the side of the pool and the pool itself, we need to tear up all that concrete. Right. There's some piping under there that all the piping runs along under the blacktop version around the pool. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is, it's going to be a project because we need to tear all that out. We need to repipe a good portion of that around. We think that we have a leak in one of the skim baskets and the only way that's going to get fixed is when we remove that. The other thing we've talked about is moving the concrete all the way to the fence line so that that way it's not this weird little strip of grass that keeps coming into the pool and clogging the filter. Also, because under this, under the fiberglass lining, it's blacktop. So one of the things we have talked about is we, the fiberglass gentleman does us a huge favor, Mr. Pettit. He doesn't charge us very much and comes each year and patches little holes. One of the things that has come up is if you're going to go in, and this is what he was saying, if you're going to go in and do all this, and tear this out. You should tear out the fiberglass, and it's I think it's called gun gun light gun yeah. gunite. Gunite. Thank you. Yeah, gunite, and going in and basically so spraying the whole pool. So we to to do something, and Ellie and I were having this conversation. I put a hundred thousand dollars in there just as a we don't know, mm -hmm. and because Date Tree last year reached out to all the contractors said okay. If you did the plumbing and you did the, you know, how much, what are we looking at here to pour this? And then of course, COVID prices go through the roof right. with concrete. And so we, we are setting money aside for it. So, and that's, so that's this repairs and maintenance one. No, it's the $10,000 uh, that goes the into capital the capital improvement fund. Rec It'll facility be, improvement yeah. fund. It's, it's, it's what goes in there. It goes that rec facility improvement fund for 10,000 goes right. into this larger capital fund. All right. So it's, we're we're thinking about it we are thinking about it and, and we're obviously hoping um we've we looked at the vorec grant thinking ah this is the pool we could do the pool and trails and wouldn't cover existing infrastructure we're like are you kidding because if it had done that we could have we definitely would have written the pool as a portion of it because that's a big you know it's a big draw and something that obviously has been there for a long time but we've we've looked and it's every time an opportunity comes up for I, money i just didn't want to i just didn't no, want to no, not right, see Jean, it and yeah. have it catch us no that that's a long story it's just uh it, it's the whole liner, thing that liner, yeah you know it's not it's not really old old no it's because, just but they don't do it any, that exactly it, that company is not going to be around there anymore exactly because um, what they used to do 
Boys, every year they scrub and repaint it. Yep. Before they got the land. The committee, the rec committee, would scrub everything and repaint it. Yeah, and the, and the hard thing about the fiberglass is it can't take too much sunlight where there's not water and you have to find this balance and then when it leaks under the, it, it's a whole thing. So I, <laughs> it's a whole thing, isn't right. it, Ellie? <laughs> so I think, I, I think within, you know, just 30 years, or I forget the time frame that they decided, the committee decided that we need to, an easier way instead of scrubbing and painting every year. So they, they came up with it. All right. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a saga. Got it. It's a saga. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, we're certainly looking there. Yeah. So that's the rec budget, uh, parks and public places we've been talking about. Last year we had $10,000 for the maintenance of the stone wall, which will move into the, into the capital fund. And then I have 5000 in this one. I asked Kelly today to track down the, the mason who keeps saying he's going to come give me an estimate. I've met with Masons and they're so busy I can't even give anyone to give me an estimate. Um, also, there's a little bit of fence repair that has to happen at Peavine. And then there's 5,500 5, in here, flower baskets. I mean, next year is the year. We have got to, we will be done with the water project on Main Street. So we need to get the buildings clean. We need to get, you know, we've talked about doing flower baskets and fixing the, um, Mr. 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 and Mrs. Taylor have, you know, lovingly been maintaining one of the triangles and so we've talked about doing that some more beautification um and uh, so and we've been talking about it so that's money in there to, to so are we going flowers. above and beyond We're, what we should be doing normally because we used to budget i don't know say fifteen hundred dollars that was no. the money that went towards the individuals that were donating their time mm -hmm. to do I don't know. I don't know what four you or five that. different locations inside the village, I, and then they had come to us you two and years I ago, right them. before or right at COVID or right before COVID. Because you and I met with Mr. Taylor in the and had asked season. that. Well, they had said that they were more than willing to continue to help, but they could help as much financially anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. So then we had to come up with the other match. So I think that's when we budgeted three thousand. Yeah, yeah. And, I think and then I just the, saw that at fifty-five. Was I was right like. Before COVID. This time of year, they came to us. Yeah, and we had also, Chris and I had, had a conversation with Mr. Taylor, I think, in the office. And um, so the thing is this, is there's, a, I'm not really sure what this is going to do. I have heard rumors that there are already flower baskets existing, but some people aren't really sure where the flower baskets are. So if the flower baskets are that come on the poles are no longer around, we're going to have to buy those. I was hoping that we would get some sort of sponsorship, maybe people for a little plaque, in a basket, maybe, um, you know, somebody sponsors a basket, so they maybe pay a little money and we put some flowers in it, but we, need, we don't have anyone on staff to maintain them. So one thing Mr. Taylor had talked about was bringing chippers in, or, or somebody like that, another, maybe somebody in Bethel that could do it, to come in and water them and keep them deadheaded and maintain the baskets. And so I know that's been a big thing. We've seen the loss of momentum and people have been upset that the downtown doesn't look as fresh as they would like. And so we had been talking about this, but I don't know, you know, we may, if no one has these baskets, these hanging baskets somewhere in the garage, we've got to buy remember, some. They were good size have, moss, yeah. have, uh, baskets. have you or anybody asked um, about the BBA? I know it's... Yeah, well, I was thinking we're laying, like, I wonder if they're stored in his building. I know a bunch yeah. of the but I didn't, DBA stuff is... I didn't think they were that. I guess I, that much I don't know, Lindley. I was under the impression that these things were only, like, a few years old, but I... Yeah, it was just... It was I was, I was like, but I... Yeah. Hiding, 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 they were a few hiding. years old a few years ago. Right, and that's why I'm thinking it's yeah. more than a few years because yeah, Heidi's been out of commission was, for more than was, three to five years. So I was saying they were a few years old a few years ago. Right, and you so, know, so they're probably like five so years like, old. So Nick yeah. might know where they are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so that's something, but if, if we don't know where they, well, we find right. them and they're not in good shape, then it's going to cost to... Um, but I was under the understanding that the 3000 that we had in there was for the... So for common areas and maintaining the baskets because they had mentioned about mm -hmm. 
having someone specifically come in and do some watering. Yeah, no, because our budget, the number, Mr. The email that Mr. Taylor had sent us that he and his wife and their proposal was higher than that because shippers alone was fairly expensive, was to come in and water everything. And we do have certain people, obviously, at Chuck Davis, and he takes care of out here and waters the flowers and stuff. So I just have no idea how much these baskets are going to cost and how much is it going to cost to get them on the poles. Do we have to, you know, is, are the um, hangers already on the poles? You know, I, I don't know. So that's why I put this number in here because I don't know what we're dealing with. I have a question as to that. We're talking about making downtown more appealing visually and all of that, correct? Yeah. So is money being spent wisely on doing that and maintaining that? Because really the first thing you see when you come into that area are buildings. That's what you look at. That's what you see. Is there a way money can be funneled to help these businesses improve the look of the facade of their buildings as opposed to giving all that money for constant maintenance on flowers and watering and this, that, and the other? Has that, can we look at- well, there is a revolving loan fund, Leonard. So people do have the opportunity to borrow at a low, you know, at some sort of rate, low interest rate that they can make with the town. But, you know, it's a slippery slope because for us to invest in private property, if I invest in a building, say, for example, say we, the town, invest in a property down there, but I'm not coming to invest in your house. You know, eventually it's a slippery slope when the town starts putting public money into private buildings. But there is a revolving loan fund. The village is a designated downtown, but Certainly, uh, Lindley is the best one to, you know, talk about that more but, so but than there, me. So there's no way to offer like a grant of assistance to paint the facade of the building or anything like that, then which it would be up to them to maintain, to get started. There's no way to do that. There's well, well, we there is. I mean, we have grant money, we currently yeah. offer. Well, no, I mean, we, we have we've all, loan fund. yeah, we've offered you know zero interest loans to businesses to do um, renovations or upkeeps to the buildings. I mean, we have two of them. I think that are currently currently open. So there, there are some opportunities. I, I would say this budget doesn't address anything like that, Leonard. Right. Um, these, these are normally what we would call the common places that the town owns, not okay. The private. Okay. No, I got but, you. Okay. So, I was just wondering. It's just the question I'm posing. Just no, yeah. and, and Lindley would be better off to speak on that topic than anybody sitting here. <laughs> and, I, and I think we all agree that you know now that we've gotten construction out of the way and you know things are getting back to normal in the downtown that obviously we want it looking good you know banners in flower baskets in the common areas but i i was on the i had thought that the three thousand covered that i'll have to so, go back you and know find. that was and that was kind better. of what we had worked through the deal with the folks right at covid and then covid happened we didn't do anything and we had the waterline project we didn't do anything my only recollection is that it wasn't, it didn't include, and I'm not even 100% sure on this, that it didn't include the baskets because we didn't know where the yeah. baskets yeah. were, but that it was the the sort of, um, the garden beds along, so there's like the one just past Brad's, between Brad's and Babe's, there's one on the opposite side of the street, um, where the Richardson, you know, it was like the, and then the, yeah, and then this corner, the triangle and then, down the triangle there, and then up here, yeah. So it was like, we, and, and I wonder too, uh, Therese kind of mentioned that their proposal was higher and we cut it down to 3,000. I wonder if we cut out the baskets because we didn't know where they were. I mean, I remember that being a part of the discussion yeah, two years ago. I feel it like, like it was a bigger Where number. are these baskets? And, um, seen them? <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it was too. Mm -hmm. And, and um, like we said too, we're obviously hoping that we could get people to sponsor, right? Um, yeah. Oh, I don't know, I'm just gonna whip some names out. Dandelion Acres, Stitch Down Farms. Would people sponsor them if we allowed them to advertise mm -hmm. their business? You know, like you see that in Williston, right? You drive down, they have all these tulips or different things and they have little signs, you know, to give somebody. So, I mean, if you wanna cut this to 3,000, that's fine. I had just put the number in here because I didn't know what you wanted to do. I mean, I love the, I love the idea of getting sort of the, the sponsorship and even if it's not, like some businesses maybe can do monetary sponsorship, but maybe some, businesses or local entities do sort of the, the volunteer match sponsorship mm -hmm. of we'll help maintain them right. if you know X yeah. number of businesses will help sponsor them. And so, so you want to go back to the three? 
I'm, I'm more just saying, I'm He's over here with his pencil, so I'm not I know. sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm feeding off your No, I just, it, you know, I'm happy to go to 3,000. Who's going to do it? That's, right, I mean, that is the... Well, and that's, and that's kind of question. what we had worked out a couple years ago, was yeah. the town doesn't have the resources to be directly responsible for it. Mm -hmm. And the burden carried by um, the volunteers was getting too, too much, right? Mm -hmm. So we we're trying to find a middle point, like maybe we invest in some of this if they help with the upkeep, I think is what we kind of ended up with. Because they used to do pretty much everything on their own. I, I think at one point we gave them like $500 or something. Could but be. It was pretty much on their own dime. Like mm -hmm. all those were, correct me if I'm wrong, Doug, right? Everything was, all those common areas were done by volunteer. Yeah. I, I don't think they received any money. And then we ratcheted it up at a stream. When you go from zero to 15 to 3,000, and we haven't done any of that level of work yet. I guess that's where I'm at. Is So now to see it from three now to 55, and we haven't done any of that work yet. Right. You know, So we don't even know what 3,000 gives us because we haven't done it. So I'll put you it know? back to three. Like the last two years we've done 3,000, and we haven't done anything. Well, no, because we were under construction. Right. But yeah. construction, I'll put COVID it back to 3,000. So. That's fine. And I know they, when they need supplies, they would go in to see Brad, and then they would buy the supplies and charge them to a town or county. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it's yep. Parks and Rec or... Yep. or but I think there's, there's definitely some good opportunities there with local businesses and other identities in and around the local area to advertise. And but their, those opportunities are meaningless if we don't have someone who is going to contact local businesses, organizations, etc., and uh, yeah, we'll be looking for a volunteer to spearhead this, it. This right. I not, nominate Jean. Just right. a second. <laughs> this, this does not. A second. I yeah, believe, we'll get a second. <laughs> Done. I don't believe this has a uh, a committee. Mm -hmm. No, 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 it's it's completely 100 percent like volunteer Brad. driven. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a couple people that may, you know, that may. Great, a couple great ideas, but I would like to see some who's going to follow through on it. If, if. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might. You know what? Chuck Davis may be the Taylor's. There, but there's a couple people right. I think that might be that might step forward to help, kind of. Yeah. Well, it's just the, the logistics of keeping those flower baskets. You're gonna have to hire somebody. You've got to get somebody with a, with a tank. I remember they would come down with a tank on the back of the truck and you know be on a ladder. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's doing the little gardens was totally different than what you had to do to keep those yeah. flowers. Yeah. So maybe it's baby, going. baby steps, maybe right. Mm -hmm. Getting the gardens done and some other stuff up. There up to par and then adding on business owners offices and stuff. Well, you've got, you know, you get the gardens done, you've got yeah. flags, you've got banners, mm -hmm. or, you know, freshen up the banners if you need to. Yeah. Start, start with that. So is that the only, so far I've just changed that to 3,000, is that the only <coughs> size me looking at? Well, just at remember, it. it's not like tonight's the end all. No, I know, tonight, but I'm just saying if you got other changes you want. Yeah, I mean, I, we'll be I, looking I, over this thing a few times. I know, but I'm just saying if you had any others, I'd like to get them in to see what it looks you know, like instead of. Because I guess the way I see it is after we get down, I mean, at some it. point we have to then decide as a board what yeah. do we want, where do we want to move the needle this year, right? Do yeah. we want to, you know, our, yeah. our, we always seem to use the 3%, which is close to three cents on the yeah. the list every year last year i think we were at two or two and a half yeah i think so but so we actually thought we were going to be raising rates to a little over two cents last year but then the grand list bumped up at a rate that it canceled that out so we ended up being like zero um, of course the grand list always kind of follows behind us so we don't really know unfortunately what that's going to be yeah. but I, I think we've always had that like starting point at like three percent three cent you know, and then we try to keep it in there. Um, yeah. So no, I'm just saying, if you have any, uh, it might be something we come back to, you know, a meeting or two from now and say, we get a little extra money, let's add some money in here, or, you know. Um, so the municipal office budget is up. There's um, obviously one of the things. Again, we're still with this 22 percent. Hopefully, I'll have an answer before that about retirement, about what to do for next mm -hmm. year. Um, the uh, so I put in ten thousand dollar contract labor. So, I'm, so just so you know, I did not include this ten thousand dollars in my calculations for Social Security, Medicare, or retirement, as I was looking at this as a as a contract position. If you disagree, right. then we can do that. Right now, um, we have uh, Rebecca and Chris 
are writing the VoRec grant. We were lucky enough to get, for me to get to VHB was one thing they recommended, and we were able to get money with no match to pay for that service. And I do the road grants, structures grants, better roads, you know, work with Rita and we can get that done. And we did, you know, and we'll do reasonable grants within the year. But what's a common thing is everybody, every time somebody wants to do something, can there a grant for that? Is there a grant for that? <clears throat> we don't have the staff to write a bunch of grants. So hence, I put a number in there thinking, okay, uh, there are contract grant writers out there so that if we had, you know, grant opportunities, Right now, it was a bunch of money that's coming to the state for transportation. I had a conversation with Rita today from Two Rivers, and obviously my first thought is that they're going to funnel, they've got to be funnel some of the money through existing things. Maybe they increase the amount of paving grants, structures grants, through a process that they already have in place. But they also whipped out the VORET grant, saying, oh, we have $6 million, and you know, but not really tight parameters on how to apply for it. So I don't know how all the money is going to get funneled to us. Um, I would like to see them <clears throat> go through, you know, some of the existing stuff, but it's well, I hard think, to know right I now mean, what I, they're going to do with the money. Within reason, I think, you know, adding money in there for grant writers is a cheap insurance policy for getting grants. I yeah. mean, I think typically... It pays for itself. It, 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 yeah, in yeah. a way it pays for itself. <laughs> the only thing I would be cautious on is yep. not not starting a new position in the office because then you have benefits and retirement and everything that gets compounded so that ten thousand right. dollar position turns into twenty five. Right. You know. Well, so that's however that's we do it, contract. I think it will have to be like either you contract some pieces out or somehow right. do it where you don't have to And, and that's some, why I put it in this way yeah. so you'd be issuing a ten ninety nine. They right. wouldn't yeah. get benefits right. because I just, they already have their own business. Yeah. So yeah. That's the way I looked at it was this was a contract position, not yeah. somebody I was paying retirement on. Um, so there's that number. Or if you have somebody in the mm -hmm. office that could pick up extra hours. I don't know yeah, how right. that works. No, but I, I think you're definitely right. There's going to be a lot of, over the next five years, you know, that money more, that's coming. There's more and more and more and more. There's going to be a lot of those, like, sudden, here's, here's a big pot of money. Do you want it? And yeah. we've got, like... 10 days to get it in, you know, type deal. Yeah, it, so, you <clears throat> so, know, that's, and um, so. And in worst case scenario, if you don't spend it and you. It just sits there. You know, right. It goes you into know, the I mean, undesignated fund balance. Not, not a terrible gonna, thing. I'm not going to spend it if I don't have someone doing the work. Um, so the rest of it, I gave you explanations. <clears throat> if there was an increase, I told you why. Um, the town hall budget is actually down a little because I we had this big building repair. Um, we don't tend to do it, and it should come out of the capital fund anyway. So, yeah. um, do we and kind of look at? I know we. It, it was a good thing because you know when I came onto the board, man, I, I don't even think we had any funds. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't. I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm looking back and forth to see who was on. Yeah. No, I guess Paul tonight. Yeah. Paul was with me soon after, but yeah. I don't. We might have just started, no, I think we were talking about the capital improvement fund at that time, yeah. but we didn't have any funds. It was, yeah. whatever was budgeted for that year was budgeted for that year, and we yeah. went like this every year. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Bill Hall actually started it. And, I think it yeah, makes sense. And the funds are really good because yeah. you can future yeah. cast things, um, but sometimes if you get too many funds, then you're like, oh, we get a fund yeah. for this, fund for that, and then you know it gets a little, yeah. then I guess the perception is, is that money really getting Side right. or, right. yeah, but exactly. I wondered, like, the town hall, this building has been another yeah. one where we've had, like, nothing and then all of a sudden $10,000 and nothing mm -hmm. and $10,000. So is it worthwhile at this point or, or can we make it so that, you know, the money that we put in our current um, – capital improvement fund would include any type of futuristic that, that's what it's supposed repairs to, to here because yeah. right now the way we have it is it's really for um, if, we, garage, if you read the old one it's town garage the te municipal office and infrastructure it was like water sewer now I mean I was if you look at the original one that was oh. drafted so they did um, we've been doing it as a capital building fund so we can deal with the repairs and my feeling is we should be funneling all that. So like any fire department, looking at all the need, fire department need, the town hall need, um, town office garage, it should all come out of that capital building fund because um, you know, that way they're capital funds that they get amortized because otherwise we budget it and we lose it. 
because if we don't use it, and currently I'm not right. aware of, oh, well, I have an electrical, I have getting some canned lights prepared <clears throat> downstairs, um, had some light bulbs removed, that helped, there's a couple canned lights, then the outside light over the can handicap entrance was apparently a whole bag of cats, because I had Dave Eddy look at it, and we finally found the as uh today, so I got to email Dave and have him come in and take a look, because he can't figure out where the wiring goes, we changed the light bulb, and that didn't do it. So we're not sure if the fixture needs to be replaced, but then Dave can't tell where the wiring was. So we do think we found the as built today. So, but I just a, didn't know if maybe plan for the capital capital building. Like the easiest thing is to just put it all in one fund. But yeah. I know the concern that the citizens had when we started these funds was it being a slush fund, right? That just gets put there and then the money doesn't get appropriated but there's correctly. A plan. I mean, there's a where if you had plan. a like we have been doing, if you have a fund for this, fund for that, at least you know that that money is appropriated to the rec committee or it is yes. appropriated to the town hall where, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, well, here, I just cut the budget by $2,000 because I'm but not aware of I just of didn't any, know. I mean. I'm not aware of any issue <clears throat> that I have to fix here. Just might be something we'll have to think you? about going. No, I'm just thinking <clears throat> down the road, it might be something that we talk about. Yeah, I mean, you know, it would make sense. I mean, setting right? aside money in there because, yeah. like, it, it's an off year this year we're not doing anything, but next year all of a sudden we might find out paint peeling on the you're, you're saying you just took 2000 out of the building repair line item? Yeah, that's all I did. I just yeah. cut it because I know we need to have the front of the building repointed um, uh -huh. in de so several places around the building. We may be able to get a historic preservation grant, but I can't even get a mason to come look at the stone wall. So, but we do know this place yeah. on the building that we found it last year while uh, they were doing... Um, working out front, Tim was noticing it. I came down and took a look. So we do need to have some work done to have it repointed before it gets bad, but. And the insurance is going up again? Can't find them. So, well, sometimes the insurance for here, is it here? Because oh, it took it, a big jump a couple of years ago It did, here. and I, well, I was also trying to fine tune the allocation, yeah. working with VLCT to get, once we have the right value, so that when they send me the schedule that I can figure out what the percentage is the boilers and this and that goes mm -hmm. to the right place. So a little bit's that sorting it out. So I've got, I've got a question going back to the capital improvement mm -hmm. issue. Uh, uh, to me, there's a difference between a capital fund and a maintenance fund that is built up in order to cover unanticipated maintenance, high, extraordinary, Mm -hmm. Maintenance expenses. A boiler yeah. blows up. Uh, sure. A pump uh, Yeah, burns we need a new out. roof. That's what we do with the capital fund. I mean, because you really can't amortize <laughs> anything. I'm not going to put an expense in there that's under, you know, generally five to seven thousand. Because you're not going to capitalize or depreciate an expense that's less than that. So we have a schedule. So the, the town garage is in there. The roof of the, you know, the town office and some other stuff. So we do. I do have a schedule for the money and how it can be allocated. And right. I asked um, the fire chief if he had any need for his building. What was he going to be looking for? So to have some sort of master sheet. So, so yeah, if it's a maintenance, it comes out of the maintenance if, line. If but I'm, if it's a if, bigger expense, it's coming out of the capital. If I'm in my, uh, if if I if I. I don't put money aside every year to replace my water heater, but I know that it's going to go. Right. All right. That's the kind of, you're saying that's a capital expenditure, not a maintenance. If it's over a certain dollar amount, that's okay. what really drives I, I just, it. Okay. Yeah, if it's a smaller. As long as we're. Yeah, if it's low hanging fruit, if it's a few hundred bucks, we need to replace a sink or do some lighting. Uh, right. But if it's a bigger but deal, I, we'll capitalize. You know, a major, it. for a homeowner, or a major yeah. appliance, right. oh, a furnace, sure. or a. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I do it with my, my equipment. Yeah. My business. If I have an equipment stash, you know, mm -hmm. if you will, because I know someday that will Someday always, you're going to have to do something. Yeah. You know, <laughs> something's yeah. going to happen. But then yeah. what we're going to have to do at some point with the board here is. That that capital improvement fund when it was put together because i was on the board when it was put together the verbiage clearly states what it's used for and it's not used for any of these things that we just talked about but I it's think used for it's clearly in there it says it's in different municipal building the uh, public works building and it says for whatever reason i don't know why it was put in there it says water and sewer 
Oh, okay, I'll go back. Those are the only the things that we're town, supposed to use that The town on. hall itself doesn't fall into that. The town hall doesn't fall into it. No, none of these other things, like fire department, none of those things. So that's where okay. either we need to but sit down and recategorize I'm, that. That's why I'm raising the right, Or we need to have more of these little funds for each one. Okay. Identity, you know what I mean? I'm, let me go back and look at the warning. Yeah. Because we changed funds, it a lot. We did fix one. So let sure me go back and look at the warning. Because, you know, and I understand what Gene's saying. If If we budget... Six thousand dollars for potential building repairs this year, right? Right. And we only use a thousand. That money goes bye bye, right? It doesn't. It does. You don't get to carry that over, you know. Right. Where, if That's that ten thousand dollar boiler goes, or something, you know, you need to. We need you to could have carried that over. money over two seasons or something, you know. Yeah, I think that. No, been, I get it. We've been through that. I'll go back. But we might want to just retake a look at that. I will. Capital I know improvement. We've looked at it. But anyway, so that's why it's at four because I'm not yeah. aware of anything other than some small lighting structures. There's a repair. Yeah. The roof has to be repaired over here. I know that Bob Conniff is going to come in and do that, but that's not. I'm thinking of the things we that's, can't think of. And that's in our six thousand dollar, you know, budget. And um, yeah. then I've got a contractor prepared to come in and fix the mm -hmm. the wall okay. where the roof is. So. But for next year, I'm just not aware of anything. Thank but, you for um, putting up with me. So I can put it back to six, but uh, that's the only reason I'd cut it to four, was I wasn't aware of anything in the coming year. So town officials, we talked about leveling these out, kind of making everybody the same. So I was like, okay, if the trustee of public funds and the health officer and you're going to cemetery commissioner, because it was that one got one amount, one got another one. Mm -hmm. We wanted to add for fire warden, tree warden. So I thought, well, if we're going to go across the board, then the select board should be the same. So I just went blanket across the board and said, everybody gets the $600 a year stipend. And then that took care of everybody. Are we missing? I know we added the fire warden and tree warden on here. Are mm -hmm. we missing any identity right now? That Not that I can think of. I know we had talked at the beginning of the year about either some people that didn't have any now that probably deserve some yeah, or or some that had a very low like mm -hmm. like it didn't make any sense why you know they were getting why one was getting 250 and yeah one was getting there was no rhyme or reason they were just numbers that were just generated exactly so <laughs> I just went through and made everybody the same <clears throat> um, and then added the other two so that was my thinking there. Um, Lister budget you already got last time that came directly from the Listers. The $10,000 assessor services, you know, certainly Mo and Judy wanted me to remind you, you know, they're not going to be Listers forever. They're both new. One of the things that they're looking for right now, again, I mentioned this last time, is to find someone who appraises um, commercial properties. So they had reached out to someone and um, that person uh, does not do like they were talking about, maybe Rock of Ages or um, the Hydro Dam. I mean, and you know, gotta have some specialty skills if you're doing that. And one person that they reached out to said, "Yeah, no, can do. We don't do that." So they're looking, still looking. So that could be something that comes out of there. I think the only thing that concerns me with the Lister piece is we we added that ten thousand dollar assessor services two years ago. Mm -hmm. because there was uncertainty about Staffing. having enough staff that we might have to outsource some yep. of the staff. Mm -hmm. And now that we are, well, pretty comfortable with our staff situation, I know there's going to be times where we might have to do something out of the box, but, you know, we've added that 10000 and that was supposed to be there to help if we had to outsource it. We're not outsourcing but we're keeping the 10,000, you know, the budget's just going up there. Do we have a read on Mo? Is he going to rerun for that position? I think so. I mean, okay. you know, he likes to remind me of his age and said, you know, we're not going to be here forever. And, and right. I'm like, I know, but you're going to be here forever. you're now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. that's no, one just, of the things just is. just curious along Chris's Yeah, point I mean, Louise is, I we thought, was going to retire already, but yeah. she hasn't. So you'd be looking for someone else. You know, she's. Because she we increased the wages by. Which they round did number ten thousand because they ten thousand assessors. They work on a regular schedule now. Right. Mo and Judy are there, which is actually really handy for the office. You have people in the listener's office that actually so you know when yeah when and they you have answer questions and help people. So this was their recommendation. But I all I'm saying is, from I had three years ago, the budget has doubled. <laughs> mm -hmm. Our listener budget has doubled in three years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So I guess that was Went from 2020 to, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it is a good point that if the, if, the, if the salaries and the wages are going up as much as they are, do we need to keep housing the $10,000 that we haven't seemed to spend in Well, you know, if anyway. they decided, if they hired, we could look and see. I can ask them about the re Let me talk to Mo and Judy because the reappraisal fund budget, if they're saying there's enough money in there, then I can double check the balance. Maybe that's something that they could say, look, if we hired someone to come in and assess these commercial properties, maybe they don't need the $10,000. They could, if they have enough funding in the, in the uh, budget to do the reappraisal, maybe there's money in there to pay for those assessments. But right now, um, we don't know. And like I said, this was their budget they put forward. So let me ask Mo and Judy what they think about that. And then just while we're on that topic, so to go to the reappraisal fund, like we mm -hmm. talked about earlier, if they said that we have what we need, do we even need to put 5,000 in there? I would say yes, because you want to keep funding that fund. Um, and I can take a look at the numbers as to what the state, because we do get a percentage from the state per parcel. But let me take a harder look at that, because the only reason I'm saying yes is that you should be, have done a reappraisal about at least five to seven years ago. About, so we'd be doing one again in a few more years, even when we get this one done. So even though we're projecting getting a, doing a two-year rolling reappraisal from like 2023 to 2025, we still need to save for the one that we're going to do in 2032 or 2030. Mm -hmm. And um, so how much money do we need to get there? So let me do the math out on that. Um, yeah, we still don't have a firm price on what this one is going to cost. Well, I well, thought, no, I they thought did we have, were... They did have a... They, yeah. they did speak to Nemrick and to talk to someone about... Um, well, when we were it? talking... Do math. I don't know, six sure. months ago about this, I was under the perception that we were off by about $100,000 from doing this. Yeah. And all of a sudden yeah, it's like, we're good. That. And I'm like, uh, oh, well, are we good? We bumped <laughs> up to 20000 because we felt like we yeah. were so far behind. So now all of a sudden we're, we're good. Doing well, it. Well, I, I know they were, because we looked at, they looked at some other towns and said, what did they pay for a reappraisal? And I knew, and, and we knew some numbers. So, but what they did was they started talking to a couple people and said, hey, you know how much is it going to cost us? Where are you at? So one of the the one of the horrible things about reappraisals is it's tough. You get very few people that do it now, but they got a price from one of the um, from someone, and they said, yeah, this is how much it would cost per parcel. This is where we're at. And Mo and Judy were like, well, we're in. Yeah. We thought it was going to be way much, way more. Well, so I was talking to Mo about it though. It, that did not include a lot of the things. Mm -hmm. they, like it would put a. A burden, not a burden, but the, our listeners would have to be involved, actively involved in setting up appointments, yeah. uh, doing the, a lot of the data entry, right. you know, a lot of stuff, as opposed to having somebody just take the whole thing and run. Yeah. Well, they drafted an RFP. I looked at their last draft and edited it. She put another one on my desk today. So they're getting preparing to, to you know, put out the RFP mm -hmm. to get, which is basically you need to get on the books for someone to do you in a oh, couple sure. of years. So that's where we stand right now. But um, so what let is me the project out the map for what the state per parcel is, what we're thinking for a cost now as to where is it going to get you when you need to do your next one? Well, I guess to figure out how much money we need to have in it for next time is what, okay. you know, how often do we need, should we do it? I know they say 10 or so years, or, or, less, or yeah. if your well, CLA yeah, sure runs out of balance. But, right. exactly. but I mean, and then what is our portion of it? Like if the state chips in, I'll make it up, 100,000, do we have to chip in 100,000? And if that's the case, should we be putting in $10,000 a year? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Years, you know, like what is that number? I'll project out the map you know. because I can go back and look historically what you've got per parcel from the state because we put it in the reappraisal fund. So I can just do the math, project it out via spreadsheet. To yeah, and then we can better and I'll talk to yeah. budget that evenly that. over 10 years exactly. or 12 years or whatever. Yeah, because we thought for sure, yeah. But so. there's going to be a big blip in the CLA with oh. all this real estate gotcha. boom and everything. Mm -hmm. Once that sense. comes crashing back down again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, usually they, the parameters on that are something like between what 95 percent and 100 it is and <laughs> or yeah and, 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 and the, i think we're at like 102 or something like that the problem right? is too is we haven't been into some of these houses yeah because you're yeah, looking at your cla which is your common level appraisal so they're looking at your last three years of sales history to get there but it's tough because you haven't been in people's houses in yeah 12, 12 years, 13 years yeah. somebody's got a brand new kitchen or all this so basically what the reappraisal is going to do is kind of bring you 
well, the other people that maybe need more appreciation and the other people need to go up, oh, hopefully it levels yeah. you out. <clears throat> so, um, I level funded the rest of the, um, all of the, well, the appropriations, I well, received an email about the Bethel Library, and then if I received a letter with a firm request, then I wrote received letter. What, did, what did we decide on the assessor services? I'm going to talk to them again to see um, if they have any idea if we could take the anyone to do the commercial out of the um, capital the appraisal fund. So I'm going to ask them. Yeah, we their basically thoughts didn't on that. decide. She's just looking into it. Okay. I, Hopefully, I, the potential of. Uh, I'd rather have it in there and not have to spend it. I guess is part of my. Appraisal. Yeah. So I'm going to see what they say about because that. Because if something should happen and we had to. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know. That's, that's always that's hard. That's all. Hard. And then, no, not the, not the library, but we had, we had the library come to us last year because they wanted to do, well, just the timing was bad and all the computers needed to be changed out at the same time. So, so we doubled the funded for the library last year to relieve that situation. And now this year they're asking to keep that, basically yeah. that forever. You know that we've doubled it. I mean, and I, I don't. I guess I don't have enough history with some of those identities of you know how much the town contributes versus how much is is done through donations and volunteer and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, I I, I don't even know. I mean, is five thousand dollars enough for a library? Is it too much? Is it like like does anybody know what the real number should be for that? Right. Well, you know, like I thought twenty five hundred dollars was was kind of cheap, but. But I guess it's one of those, like, I don't have enough information to understand. Like, all I know is we doubled it, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, seems like a lot of money. Yeah. But is $5,000 the right number? Is it 10? Is it two? Is it, you know, like, well, I can where add, do we I go wrote to Lisa Campbell and said, hey, you know, so you sent this letter for five grand. And I said the same thing. Well, <clears> they agreed to put money in last year for your computers. Did you have a problem with that? And she's like, no, we're moving forward with the computers. Mm -hmm. But as a local library, we always have a lot of need. And... And um, so they felt that the money could be spent. And then she CC'd the president, uh, which is Lisa Hill, and of the library board trustees. And she said the same thing. They didn't give me a specific. There was no, we're going to buy this or we're going to do that. But what I can do is ask, email them back and ask them for their recent, um, let's see your books. I mean, if so I had a balance sheet or something. You know, if I had to guess, we probably underfunded the library for many years yeah. and now we're trying to play catch up right kind of like yeah. what we did with a lot of things but i guess it's just what is that real number that we should be or you know what is that the real real number that we should be yeah, well, appropriating let's... money for I, ha I have a comment about the library uh, i was surprised that they were not able to participate in an interlibrary uh, lending service so that if they didn't have a book on their shelves, you might be able to get, get it from, from somebody else, yeah. somewhere else. I don't know the reason for that or the rationale for that. Yeah. I, I, uh, I've gotten books from them through Otto Randolph. That they Randolph has the capacity to do that. Yeah, but they were worth Bethel. Well, but the they books. told me they couldn't. Oh. Uh, okay. You have to be in the in crowd. <laughs> no, maybe <laughs> yeah. so that's because we raised their budget by twenty five hundred dollars really last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's it. You, know, so you got to buy any membership. Crowd, so know. anyway, <laughs> my, the question I have, and maybe this isn't the place to ask it, but the question I have is, if that is a subscription thing, or if there's a fee for having that access, or maybe they have it and I misunderstood. Yeah. Uh, what are the, that's something I think that it should be basic mm -hmm. to a library. Okay. Um, oh, it'd be nice to have a little letter. more. Dear Therese, the trustees of the Bethel Library Association request a continuance of the annual Town of Bethel contribution of $5,000 for our library in the town budget. We do appreciate support of the Town of Bethel and rely on your continued interest in maintaining a vital community resource. So, and then when I emailed yeah. them, that was it. There's no which which I would expect would be the proper response, right? Yeah, like, yeah. we don't want you to go back down to $2,500. Yeah, you know? But I just wonder if maybe it's better to, I don't know. 
do some research or bring him in to see. Well, I'll ask her if she's got. What some. is a realistic number that we should be budgeting or helping with? Yeah. Are, yeah. There, are there services they would like to supply that they cannot afford? Yeah, Something, I'll ask you know. her. Services. What is the real number? You know? Their services the population would like that they're they're well, choosing. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not just the interlibrary, but there's a whole you can through the state yeah. of Vermont, you can be on okay. the audiobook consortium through the right. library, so you can get right. audiobooks, mm -hmm. but our library doesn't do it. And so, you know, there there are services that, that exist. I was looking for an audio, but that's... Right, but there's services that exist that our, our library doesn't participate in, probably because of capacity and <clears> funds. <throat> and so, yeah, are there things that even, not just what the library is thinking about, but what people were wanting? Yeah. Yeah. The other one too, Warva, I just got their spreadsheet today, so I'm gonna double check their number. Um, I just got their um, spreadsheet, so I haven't had that. Uh, the debt financing is debt financing except for the line of credit for Bethel Royal <laughs> Transfer Station. Chris asked me about this. I didn't really know what to do. I didn't wanna get caught with our pants down here. Whereas if we, we're going to sign, you're going to sign papers in a minute here for the $100,000 loan that we... Maybe. That, yeah, maybe. <laughs> that we, that, we has, that they said you do. And um, Royalton has done theirs, but I wasn't sure what to do. Obviously, yeah. in the perfect situation, they borrow the money, they pay it back. But if they don't, we're on the hook for it. So I thought, all right, should I just budget for interest only on the full amount so I, I could go either way here. I just really didn't know what Maybe. to do yeah. with it. I, I didn't know what I to do. I think they should be paying everything back. Well, I'd like to think so, but if they can't, well, I just didn't want to be. Yeah, I'm like, well, you, it's your loan in the end. It's the good full faith credit of the, of the town of Bethel, and you're the ones holding the bag at the end. But I, so I'm happy to do whatever you want here. I, I wasn't really sure, and I just didn't want us to miss it, so I put something in. Well, I but think if that you want me to take it out. I think I, that opens up a whole nother discussion that we need to put on for the next meeting is, you know, what is our intentions with the facility? I know we talked about um, in our agreement in order to opt out, we have to do it by January 1st or mm -hmm. whatever of each year. So we really don't have a lot of time now if that's the route that we want to go because I'm sure, you know, the paperwork's got to go to a lawyer. That's going to take a little bit of time to get there. And, you know, we're. We're almost to December 1st, right? So, you know, we're a month away from having to do action or be in it for another year, right? We had also hoped we would have had a second meeting with a joint meeting yeah. by now. Uh, that hasn't happened, and there have been reasons for not having it. I'm just... Yeah. And, and it seems like right now that financially, at the moment, things are kosher, but... <laughs> Behind the scenes, things are unraveling, it's from what I'm understanding. So, like you know, there could be more problems coming down. You know, just a mixture of people trying to hire people, a mix of what we're trying to, the two towns are trying to do there. You know, financially right now, like last year at this time, we're like, sh you know, we can't keep bankrolling you, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. That right now seems to be at least right now, good. Yeah, uh, they're, we're paying, they're paying they're paid up. every month. So, uh, but right now. now it seems like some of the I don't know, procedures and policies that are being in place, you know, may not be heading in the right direction. So um, it's definitely something that we want to oh. put on the next meeting, probably talk about seriously, like, mm -hmm. do we want to move towards yeah. not, or do we want to roll the dice and take another year with it, you know? So I can take our chance that, to get out, you know. I can take it out of the budget if you want, but I, I like I said, it, I just figured we well, need to Why don't you just make the, the edits something? that we had there and then present us the new, um, okay. the new cover sheet. But didn't you have some more? I thought that. <laughs> I got a whole bunch, but. Well, I know. Well, I, <laughs> we can, well, well I, you know, again, we have to kind of get to a point, you know, I think yeah. we don't need this tonight, but at the next meeting, we need to get to the point of based on where our edits are now. We probably have a few other ones that we may want to do or not do. Yep. But how do we feel with the overall budget number and and the increase that folks would see in that? You know, do we feel that it's a modest increase that everybody can absorb? Do we think we need to take a little bit out? Or do we think that we can put a little more away? Um, I think we'd next time we'll just have to be prepared to make that 
-hmm. what we what's, think that number is, and then we can back into it. What's the bottom line percentage? Um, right I now? think, oh, what's the bottom line percentage? I think we're at. Well, things have changed because that just that one, the constable piece is like a seventy yeah, thousand dollar yeah. difference well, there. Well, I had you down seven hundred. Well, I had it over here on the oh on this page, I think. I had we stuck with the part time constable and the signage. Um, you're at two point eight one, and then I did the number underneath it saying. Minus the ERAF, just to show you, because we don't have any control over the ERAF. So the ERAF brings you to a 0.10% increase over last year. Because So I just wanted you to see, um, so constable signage, which is at 2.81, and we already are making some changes to this. Budget. But that was the old one, right? No, before that's, the... no, it's the one I gave you tonight that I redid before I came here. Okay. That dropped it from the 4000 the my 40000 to $4,000 error that I made over the... Well, I think anything under three is good. And... Um, Ballpark. Yeah, so um, so that's where I started. And I, and I just separated out the ERAF just because it's something we don't have control over. Um, so I just kind of wanted to see. Is the math. Uh, that number doesn't seem to add up. Well, I took the... Because I chopped, like in my... But I did behind the scenes. I chopped okay. more than what we talked about tonight. But my, you probably adjusted your revenue. And my numbers only no. Well, I'm just saying just the. Right now you have the proposed cost two five three two, right? Yeah. Uh, I have the the full. Yeah, that's minus the. And that hasn't even taken account. That's minus any the ERAFs. But if I'm saying up here was part time, this was the constable and signage. Budget. Oh, 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 the ERAF. I'm sorry. Yeah. So what I was saying here is. So we're at two five eight nine minus the pieces that we had yeah, talked so I, about. Yeah, it was right here. Yeah, two point eight one. So, but I'll go back and make sure my numbers are right. And um, but thank you for that. Catching that. that four to forty. Thank you for that. I was happy when you called and said that. I'm like, oh, sweet. <laughs> And then usually, Gene, during budget time, um, depending on depending on the grand list, usually it's around twenty. Now it's about twenty thousand dollars per penny. So every twenty thousand dollars swing in our budget is about one penny on the tax rate. All right. Um, round numbers. Right. You know, it, because our our grand list is just over yep. two million. It's two two oh two yeah. something. Yeah. Um, it used to be like one nine five yeah, I have, something. Yeah, it took a pretty good jump seven. last year. Because yeah. so, it used to be like nineteen thousand four hundred dollars per penny, and now it's about twenty. So when you're looking through that, you think you know because usually you kind of thinking to yourself the penny rate, right? Like uh, if we go up three pennies, how much does that you know affect each person? And so three pennies would be sixty grand that 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 budget would have to change between revenue and cost, you know. Which I think right now we were sitting at. After all the oh, after those edits, we were sitting at like uh, sixty, I think. So we're like three cents, I think, right now, about where we're at. No. So we're kind of right, right close to usual the goal. So. Yeah. And so I'll make the changes and look at the other revenue side too for the right. tax. So that'll help you. That'll be, that'll look, um, look at that right. and see what that was for last year. Any further questions on the budget for this evening, or we will have a few more revisions on it. Yeah, and then, what are we you. thinking for a? Um, I got a. For meant to look at the calendar. I a have night above my for desk. doing. I'm just trying to think. How soon did we do it before? We have to have it in by what second week in January? We signed it. We signed the warning. I don't remember. We got pretty quick. I meant I'd love to wrap it up at the next meeting. Um, we signed the warning on January 11th, but I'd love to finish the budget next meeting. I'll so we're going to have to have an informational meeting. Yeah, we always have to have an informational meeting. We have it in the Monday before. Um, we have two. Yeah, we have one the first select board meeting of the month of February, and then we have another one. Uh, or no, excuse me, sorry. We have done a special meeting in the past and did a, a budget informational in the middle. 
and then we always do one the meeting before town meeting. Right. Um, but we did one because we were Australian ballot last year. There was different rules. Right. So but, I'm thinking um, the. So the budget the, the budget the, discussion meetings happen in February, but we have to send go to print for the town report. So, I mean, I I'll bring. Well, we've always had a meeting right before the report got printed. Like this is this is the final budget. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, they're all. So that would be. Meeting. So you're saying. I'm saying well, the next meeting is the 13th, right? Yeah, it'd be nice. So are you saying doing that on the 13th or the 27th? Because that would be the... Uh, well, you saw in January 11th. Honestly, I'd love to wrap up the budget on the 13th. If we could, if you could tell me what the numbers are, we could still have the following, the meeting, but at least it just, it helps to get through it because it's all, because the budget is a huge part of the town report. Um, so I'd have to look back at our schedule from last year, but obviously you signed the warning on January 11th and you would have had to have the final budget numbers. So we'll either finish on the 13th or the 27th. Yeah, the 11th was um, the first first meeting of the... I'm put something in the chat. So that would then, okay. So we'll aim for the 13th then. Okay, oh, so um, Leonard said, leave the meeting visual was great and there was a bit of an echo but i could clearly hear the select board members in attendance so um could, could he hear the i'm sorry he's not there what was he's he able left. to hear the audience members yeah he said he yeah, could okay. he said there was a little bit of an echo because that was our he could clearly hear the audience so i think we're always going to have an echo in this room i think that's true so um anyways okay. yeah chris so All right. we'll you know, so yes, and the perfect, it'd be nice. Well, just that way, so we'll week. advertise it that the next meeting will be. Just like we did this time, budget discussion, it's going to be on there, just like we always do. Well, I'm, I know, but we're going to act on it next meeting, is what you're Poss saying. Well, maybe, I'd just like so to. Just so that people know that that would yeah. be their last chance to voice any opinions. Yeah, that they may we have. can flush it out. If not, what's going to Before town happen? meeting day, you know. If not, but. we'll make any final edits. The final edits should be next time on the 13th, right. and then when you get it on the 27th, that would be okay. done and done. Yep. Okay. But, um, sounds good. That's my hope. It's just nice to get it done. Sounds good. All One right. last thing we got to worry about. All right, Mascoma Bank note. So the Mascoma Bank loan for the transfer station for $100,000 at 2.5%. You obviously right here is the documents. There's the motion to adopt the resolution and certification and to approve the promissory note, disbursement request, and errors and omissions. You're going to see in here there's some changes that the bank already initialed. So you all have to go through here when you see BAV, that's um, some of the bank, and you guys have to initial these changes. These are changes that your lawyer made. And uh, that- We all have to initial every yeah, one of those? that's what they requested, yes. We haven't done that in the past, but I'm like, okay, no big deal. Huh. And, um, but these are changes that the lawyer made that, and Mascoma agreed to them, and so we're all good. But that's the loan if you want to, <laughs> the, the legal rank so if we, gone behind this thing. If we ended up opting out of this thing or giving our notice in January, which mm -hmm. wouldn't take effect until what, June or something? Right, yeah. How would that affect this note? Well, basically you, it would be part would of your, close up? it'd be your part of your finance. Yeah, because if you haven't borrowed anything, it's no big deal. We're not right. taking out any money unless we have to. And um, so obviously, or, or not obviously, honestly, as part of your financial closeout with Royalton would be to pay off the debt that you were owed. Yeah. And then, and then right now, the, um, the goal is any money that is borrowed to meet payroll, that or interest anything. would get paid back to us through the transfer station. My, right? Yeah, if we get a bill from Mascoma, the transfer station, it's going to get coded from their budget. They're going to pay okay. for it. Um, obviously, that, I mean, that's their hope is that they've raised revenue enough. Right. And, and, uh, and right now they're doing okay. I mean, they still have high numbers. So pretty, pretty good numbers. They've been really busy. Mm -hmm. So um, currently it looks good. And they haven't even borrowed off Royalton's $100,000 line of credit. So currently yeah. there is no borrowing but and it's and it works out nice is they're paying it's not like it's bills. an uncommon thing i mean there's many businesses that that have that take out you know loans to meet payroll you know so that's kind of yeah. a normal and it, practice and it may be anything it may not um, be more than yeah. payroll it could but be in this case expenses. if they yeah. if they take out something and i don't know, make it up it's 500 dollars in interest and they'll pay us the 500 dollars in interest back well they're just going to write the check directly something. to mascoma 
Oh, That's okay. Gonna be. We're right now we've sold and the it. interest. Okay. Yeah, so they're they're cutting the okay, check gotcha. directly right now. Um, but because of the way that the interlocal was set up, um, mm. they can't borrow on their own. You guys have to borrow. Why well, Mass Delta and not Bar Harbor? Where did that shift happen? Because Legally, Bar Harbor right? would not make the edits that okay. the lawyer that was, wanted, yeah. and so I went back to Bar Harbor and said, "We're going to have to pull our request if you can't." If you know, the select board is not going to sign something that the lawyer is saying, do not let them sign this mm -hmm. because, and um, so they couldn't. I'm not sure if one is more of an out of state bank and one, Mass mm -hmm. does more banking in state yeah. or what, but so we ended yeah. up not. I think they're both in the same kind of market, signing. aren't they? Yeah, yeah I think. Yeah, yeah I but mean, the, we've had really I just good was luck. Curious. That yeah. was my assumption was that yeah. Mar Harbor wouldn't make the changes. Yeah. But they wouldn't, and every time, um, you know, and, and so obviously okay. we pay for legal advice or the transfer station. I've, mm -hmm. They've paid for all the bills for negotiating this stuff. And being that we we um, have a piece of this loan, we'll obviously get statements of what's being Yeah, they can't. The borrowed and what's being paid. <laughs> the only one who's going to come off from here is um, Pam. They okay. can't borrow the money because it's our tax ID number. That's okay. so, so. But we'll know when there's. So technically, Royalton's hundred thousand is with Bar Harbor, and ours is with Mass Tomo. Oh, exactly. Fascinating. Because they had agreed, Jerry had said in the beginning they would do what we did, and I said perfect. So we'll pay. The lawyer's gonna, you know, transfer station will pay for the attorney. We didn't do it, and then they signed, and I said, what is? Why did you sign? You went against legal advice. You said we would do the same things. Mm -hmm. And I said, the lawyer's saying no, but the Royalton Board apparently didn't so they, need a legal they opinion. They didn't have a legal opinion? They and signed they it. And I said, <laughs> our lawyer is saying not to sign it, but they well, took it upon themselves. I made the, And I'm like, OK, whatever. But I said, Bethel's not doing that. Mm -hmm. And then they had said, why are you dragging your feet? And I said, <laughs> because the lawyer said not to sign it. So hence we <laughs> ended up here. So that's right. your long motion. So just need a, a motion to adopt the resolution and the certification and to approve the promissory note, disbursement request and errors and omissions. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 We just have to make sure we initial every piece yeah, of this, right? Yeah, so there's, I didn't tag it, so there's several things okay. to sign. Um, so yeah, it's been a <laughs> it's been a thing, but um, oh boy. Attorney Fletcher was good. just initial it. Is that... Yep, he was a good. He's always been good to us. But yeah, Lindley, I don't know why they. So I end up talking to Jerry, and I'm like, we're not dragging our feet. We just right. and I've been making them pay for all the legal bills. Yeah, want the money. No, it's good. So um. It's like signing your life away, isn't it? It's like I'm. Yeah, don't even come away with it. Like, <laughs> this just feels it. wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not even coming out of here with like a new vehicle or something. Like, what's going on? I'm gonna have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm. Oh, that's funny. What? That one's nothing. Okay. While we're signing, won't we just move on, catch up some time here? Sure. Pinella Bridge Engineering and Design. Yep, that's pretty easy. Um, we got proposals from three contractors. Obviously, it's really hard not to go with a low bidder when you're dealing with FEMA. You're probably going to want, you know, blood samples and stuff if you don't. But we went through with BHB. It was good design and or a good uh, proposal, and they they've done, you know, work like this before, and so made sense. So it was the Bidders were right here. They were the high bidder. Otter Creek was the second, and then um, VHB was a little better. And this is based on a, <clears throat> a lump sum bid, or this is an RFP that no, this is an RFP that we put together with help of B Trans to get through the through the project. It was a detailed scope of services. I think I put it in a previous packet um, a month or so ago. So this is the outcome of that. <laughs> And their the price in here, you can see, obviously, is their response to the proposal. So, obviously, you hoped you covered it, but it's hard because they're picking up from a prior engineer. So, it would just be a motion, and I'll, once we do that, I'll 
call them tomorrow and get the contract going and I just we need to get them started when would the design process finish do you, did they say how long it would take them or? well we had been through that it was all laid out in the RFP which I didn't bring with me tonight and uh, I think that I had said I needed construction documents by the end of February so that we could put it out to bid and then obviously there's yeah. some construction management in here um, they needed to do some soil borings so they've already have I'm not sure if these guys are dealing with Sanborn head or somebody else but they'd already preliminary set that data <coughs> side so um, okay. it's you know ready to run they I gave them from the prior person everybody got a thumb drive with all the documents we had FEMA did allow us to keep both uh, high, uh, North Star Hydro and contact bridges in the game without issuing a new RFP since they were already on board and they had an idea of the project I'd ask FEMA specifically if we could keep them so, okay. so that's it all right just need a motion to award the contract to VHB. Any amount? Ooh. Do you need the amount or are we good? I'm all right. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. As long as it doesn't come back and bite us, okay. as so many of them do. Yeah. Well, hopefully not, babe. It seems like every time we engineer something, it's like, really? Uh, I know. Well, what are you going to do? We you don't know, have a choice. I, this it's is Groundhog Day every time, all um, over again. Well, we made out though. Penelope. Uh, Penelope. We've been there. down that road Bevan a few was times. Okay. Well, I'm I'm saying before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it, well, it, no know. fault of anybody, but we've been down that road oh, a few times God. on different projects. And yeah. So hopefully that's it. So um, what do you got next? The town, the twenty, the draft warning is in here, um, which is the same warning I've been giving you. Um, let me see. So. I'm not sure if I said, but I'll, in my town manager's report, but I, I recommend that you take out cannabis, frankly, because I really, it's just a feeling. I just feel like the state, you know, they passed the legislation, which is, you know, fine, and then they kicked it to the, you know, the, the council, and they're still trying to figure stuff out, and I gave you the list of all the towns near us that I had, that I could find that had passed it, so Randolph and other, and I just... I am, I'll admit, I don't like to, to let somebody else figure this out who has more money, a bigger town with more money. And then when they work the bugs out, you could always adopt it, you know, next year. I, I, I always hate being the first <laughs> because eventually it causes somebody money and heartache. So that's just my opinion. You can do with that what you want. So um, I had, uh, you know, I don't think I've gotten a 100% consensus from anybody that I've talked to or I, I did have um, a few individuals that reached out to me um, I'll say it was last week or Everybody tail end that. after our other one Thank that you. that voiced their opinion they were you know um, but I haven't like found like an overwhelming one way or another um, so I, I guess what I was I was talking with Therese today when we were up on Dart Hill and said, you know, I wonder if we treat this at this point more like, like the Doyle poll thing. Like, like, do we, does the select board put out their own questionnaire that we can not just, not just give at town meeting day, but um, have an opportunity to either put it in, um, like we could put, we could put a copy of the questionnaire in the back of the town report. Um, we could mail some we could mail them out to people for their water bills and sewer bills. We could do things like um, like uh, Survey Monkey online also so put to get some information. And I wonder if we I wonder if we put like we could do a, a couple of different questions on the survey together. You know, one would be um, to go to the vote in regards to the cannabis. Two would be not to specifically label the Australian ballot, but to put on a question that would say, you know, in support of Australian ballot um, voting in, in the future. Um, and then the other one would be um, like the policing or constable piece, just to gather some information. And then I think, you know, if we get overwhelming information on one way or another on a topic, then, then that gets directed back to the board of, this is your to-do list to work out and get done for next town meeting. You know, if that's, you know, overwhelming for, I don't know, policing in one way or another that we build that into our next budget. And if, um, 
you know, if we have an overwhelming support that says we do want Australian ballot, then we need to move on that. You know, either put the question on the ballot, right? Because I just wonder if right now we just haven't gotten enough information to yeah. to solve all these. Um, one of the things we talked about today was putting that survey also in town report. Town report is the only document besides your tax bill that goes to every red, but this goes right. to every registered voter in Bethel as well as the household. So. You know, we talked about is maybe making the last page so someone could tear it out. So it either has a survey monkey or they can answer the questions and drop it off or mail it to the town office. Make sure on the back that it has something in it. So do make it a survey monkey link on there. So if someone wants to just go online and answer or they can actually tear it out and mail it back or drop it off. So that was my thought to Chris when he brought up his idea. I said, well, town report is the only thing that goes to every registered voter. And I wonder if... It being the same color page in the back of a book, people wouldn't notice it versus like when you do stuff with like the water sewer or mm -hmm. delinquent taxes, you make it a colorful page, you put it in front like of a even yellow just page a loose or something. Page. Like I know that it's in its time of putting mm -hmm. one in every report, but would you get more results? And it'd be hard to mail it that way because once it's it gets mailed like this. Yeah, so these good. things aren't sealed. Yeah, I couldn't I could it has yeah. to be attached. I could ask her. I don't can you make one page a different color in the report? No. No, 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 because, no because the way Oh, gotcha. Well, you, you, you. Penny might also kill every single one. Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> well, that might be a good exercise. <laughs> you you, you can do it, but you would have to, <laughs> yeah, no, you would have Paul, to put a tape over. Paul's a printer. We'll send yeah. Therese down to. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it would be. Oh, we'll send Therese it, to break it to her in the morning. It, it, you know? It's well, dual. Technically, it's Paul dual. You could, Paul you could technically, you could staple in, you could stitch in a. Uh, like a, a, a paint piece of paper, but it had to be two pages. Have to be, it would have to run the, because I think they do them in four page units or eight page units. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think the piggyback on what Paul's I think Gene had said at the beginning is it, <laughs> it wouldn't be just um, just as you know sampling people that show up for town meeting. We could also put it in the water yeah. bill or sewer bill mm -hmm. and ask that but, those be dropped off. And we could also do. For online, you know, because more people are online now, we could do the survey monkey that we could advertise. The hard uh, part is multiple people could fill it out. Somebody could well, fit there a hundred times. But, but ultimately, the, the 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 Australian ballot issue question and the uh, cannabis question must be decided at town meeting. Exactly. Yes. So yes. If you were to put a survey in this year. Yeah. We would not be able to act until next year. Until yeah. the year oh, subsequent yeah, year. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what that gets us. Uh, it gets you more inclusivity of people participating in their giving their opinion about which you know how they feel about those topics without locking into an immediate solution. No, it doesn't without but the putting discussion. it on the ballot doesn't lock into a solution. It's simply puts the option of voting for it or against it. Right, and I think the, the counter to that being that then the vote for or against is only the people who have shown up for town meeting as opposed to a survey could get a wider subset of information that then informs how things move forward as opposed to only who's at town meeting. Well, I guess you, yeah, session. I mean, I guess you could say you could put it on the warning for town meeting, right? And then the individuals that come to town meeting all want town meeting, right? And they vote it down. Mm -hmm. But then the individuals that the whole Australian ballot system is there to potentially help aren't there to vote, you know what I mean? So I just wonder if, if we get more information now, and let's say we do a couple of different methods of collecting um, data, mm -hmm. And then we get the data back and it says, I don't make it up, 75% of people want to see X then, then that kind of, then, then I think we can better shape that question and put it on the, to the warning, you know, and I think it will be, at that time, you can get more information out there that we will be voting on Australian ballot at town meeting. I mean, I think right now a lot of people are kind of like, like we've had like a couple of different times, like I remember one meeting we had overwhelming support for 
it's well, of course, it's only a sample population of three or four of you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against you, three or four, but. <laughs> But I remember we had one meeting that it would seem like the overwhelming support was for some sort of Australian ballot, right? And then it seemed like the, the meeting that we had here last time, it seemed like there was more support for um, not, you know, sticking the way we had it. So it's kind of like, but again, that's only a sample population of like eight people. So it's like, <laughs> you know, and, and the people I, I, I've been, tr everybody I see or pe the few people I've reached out to me, you know, it's not like they're all saying, town meeting, it's not like they're all saying, you know, Australian ballot. Uh, my, my, I, I, I ask the same question. So suppose we put a survey in, and it says the majority of the people who are not attending town meeting think it should go this way, but the next year you put it, the question, not, yeah. but the next year it winds up, we put it on the ballot, the people who show up at town meeting are going to be the same people who showed up at the town meeting this year. Whether they represent, now whether they're influenced by all the people who don't attend town meeting or not, this survey, I'm not sure the survey does any, if it were an action that the, the select board needed to take, then I would say yes. Do the survey, get as much information as you can. And I think that that's appropriate for the, the constable position. Yeah. I, I, I question whether uh, having a survey about something that the town meeting ultimately has to vote on uh, is really doing anything. If it's warned, there is opportunity for people to to say I'm to write a letter to the editor or whatever I'm going to vote for this or I'm going to vote for that. It is an opportunity for public discussion uh, as much as for any issue that goes before the meeting. Do you think that a survey? Just out of curiosity, because I get what you're saying. Do you think that a survey would uh, a survey this year would get more people to come to town meeting? On next year, if they knew it was on the ballot, because I understand what you're saying, you're right. There's always the same sample people right. are going to be there. I totally, you're right about that. And um, but I'm just curious if, if you think that if we did a survey this year and kind of pushed it more, I don't mean. I guess it's a year out. I guess it'd be hard to say. I'm just curious if we'd get more, drum up more business for more people to come and vote on it. But yeah, I don't know. Well, so you, I either, mean, either way, you're right. You could add to that question. Happen. You could say, he's, he's right. you know. Uh, are you in favor or would you like to see Australian ballot? And then if they say yes, if so, uh, because it doesn't have to be a town meeting. You could do a special meeting in November and, you know, you could vote on it town-wide to go to Australian ballot if that was what people want to do to then present it at the, I mean, there's, right. it doesn't have to be a town meeting. No, you can you, hold a you just have special hold a session special anytime session. you want it. Yeah, but I'm just, money cost. I mean, I yeah, think, I, I think right yeah. now, if we put it on the warning or not, you're still going to have the same 180 people that are going to show up at town meeting, right? This year G or next year? Give or take. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's out there for a longer period of time, maybe you get more people, maybe you don't. Yeah. It's kind of like that Tuesday thing versus a Saturday thing. You get more people and it didn't show like you did, but. Yeah. I mean, I do think just purely to, to play out your question, right? I actually don't have a strong opinion on this personally, but I think what it does is it gives the select board more of the voice of a broader population. So then at that meeting, if you get somebody standing up on the floor and saying their viewpoint about keeping town meeting exactly as it is, a member of the select board who, or anybody who's seen the results of that survey could stand up and say, well, counter to that, we have, you know, X number of people the who filled out this support. survey. So it's, it, it, I think your point is valid, but also there is merit to it. So it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's right. It inevitably it goes in front right. of the voters. So he's and, right. And, and it goes in front of the town, the floor vote. You're right. And I, I feel more, less about my argument in terms of Australian belt than I do with the cannabis. Mm -hmm. 
what, regardless of what the feedback we would get from it, the town's going to ultimately have to vote that up or down. Yep. I think and it's giving people more, more warning. I mean, yes, we can all sit here and say, well, it's in the warning. You should know. You need to be informed as a citizen. But we also know the realities that people don't read the warnings and aren't informed. And so <laughs> then is it on us as a town to do a better job of getting more information out to the public more regularly, which I think we do, but we still are catering to the same audience on a weekly basis. So, you know, it's is is a survey a, a way to potentially get a handful of people who maybe weren't aware, a little more aware, or giving us their feedback, or hitting the people that don't know one of us personally if we're doing these anecdotal, you know, individual surveys. I mean, you can, you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make them drink, but we've got to lead the horse. I think we've got to put it out there and give, as we talked about giving as many people opportunity to input, and how do we do that, Zoom or, you know, in person, or how do we do, how do we accomplish that? And that's a good way to accomplish that. Whether or not they fill it out and send it in, you know, we've done what we can do. Uh, but at least it would give more input from a wider base. And then you can, you can utilize the results of that survey to, to, as part of the discussion. Because we're just guessing, you know. What, I'm sorry, huh? Well, as long as you're distributing it in an equitable way. Well, well it would go out to everybody. Well, it goes out to every registered every voter. Every registered voter. Every registered voter and property owner yeah. get a copy of town report. So it goes out there. Plus, we would do the usual, you know, right. Facebook. But I, my point is, I mean, that has to be part of what you think about. If you're just sending it to folks who have property, that's not actually. Right, no, it goes to. Yeah. Goes, goes to all the registered voters. Oh, yeah. yeah, it goes to both. Yeah, yeah we, we, we yeah. call this list every year. We pull the property owners, registered voters, because you may be a registered voter, not a property owner. So we try to, we try to nail down everybody. And uh, with the town, we obviously with mass mailing the town report. So that was only the suggestion of putting it in as a, like the last page of the town report. So someone could, the back could be blank and someone could. Well, and I do think then I having an it's online version maybe hits a population that, I don't know, for whatever reason, chucks it in the bin right as they get it out of their mailbox and they don't even open yeah. it to know and, there's and a survey. The, in you it. could put the link on here too, so if you did, if you chose to do that, you could do the survey plus have the link to the survey monkey, but have the survey monkey only open for whatever, a month or whatever, or a month and a half, whatever you want, I don't care. But set it open so that at least it's on there too, so if someone didn't want to, you know, desecrate their town report, I mean, they could yeah. go online and instead of tearing I it up. I frame mine and put them on the wall See, I like each to year. think that people do, because so much work goes into it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a whole specialized frame that I can add each That's year That's right. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, I, I don't know, it's just a... But it is tricky to collect data, uh, yeah. because it's... it's Hard. Unless you got every single person in one room, right? Yeah. And raise your hand or didn't raise your hand. You have no way of knowing, right? You're always going to collect different sample well, populations. Any you know. survey is only going to be yeah. a portion anyway. Right. right. So I, but I do like it. It does give the, I guess, uh, the way I've always, you know, on the select board anyways, the way I've always seen my duty is, even if it's something I necessarily don't want to see if if you know we'll, we'll use the um, we'll use the bull belts as an example, right? <laughs> yes. Anytime you can use the bull belts, right? So you know the bull belts were something that you know I, I didn't a hundred percent think that it's a very crowded downtown and think really it's probably but an overwhelming majority of people wanted to take advantage of the grant and see these changes, so I voted for it. And, and, so I always try to take my personal opinion out of it, but I like to have enough data to say, you know, like usually you come out of town meeting and there's some things that people have barked at you and said, we want to see this and that and this, right? And then you know to start working on those things, right? And in this case, it's like, you know, like what? Like t for me to get up at town meeting day to say, uh, you know, the reason why we put this on here is because there's been overwhelming support for it. It makes it easy for me, you know, or, or justifies the stance in it. 
And right now it's like, well, I don't know, we're just going to throw this stuff on here because these are options that we have in the world and I don't know. You know, I mean, I, I don't know how to support I, I, it. I Other than at that point, I'll have to support it individually, right? I understand and I yeah. appreciate it. But uh, again, we're not talking about putting the substance of the issue. Um, we're not, we're talking about putting, we're talking about putting the, giving the community the, the opportunity to vote on something. We're not giving them, this is what we have decided or ought to happen. Um, we're not hey, putting it on the agenda is not deciding how the how the town should vote on the issue. That is the ultimate survey. Yeah, it's true. And uh, so I, I just uh, I'm not I'm not gonna. <laughs> so I'm, I don't want to beat it beat the dead beat it to death. I just think that there is a there is a time for gathering public opinion uh, and and a time to say look we're going you're going to have to make a decision especially like the cannabis thing at some point they're going to have to make a decision regardless of what any survey is going to say and and I I'm not sure that submitting a survey in advance serves much purpose but I've had my say, and I, I don't need to hear any more about it. I just think we need to. Uh, well, and don't forget, people can petition. So even if you choose that was, you know, not to put it on there, then there's obviously a petition process where, yeah. you know, they, there's a process laid out clearly by the Secretary of State and statute, in which case um, there's only certain circumstances in which somebody can force you to put something on the warning. But if it's something that has to be voted on, has to be voted on by the voters, then uh, then a properly filed and followed petition is something that would force you to put it on the warning. Mm -hmm. So, um, but anyway, so you can decide. So on here, obviously, the one thing we didn't we had put on here, as I've said before, 12 is the elect officers by Australian ballot. 13 was the budget articles. The other one that was um, we kicked around was the other one is you can vote public questions that way. Um, so I'm not sure what you want to do here. If you want to leave 12, take out 13, put on 14, or, or what is it? What's the mix you want to see here? If you guys had agreed to make a decision that way, if somebody used them, they'd have time to do so it. It would be my preference to put the officers on, but not the budget. Okay. That would be my preference. But if the okay. board wants to go with the survey, we should do that. And what did you think about 14, about cannabis? You want to leave it on or take it off? I'd just soon put it on and get it over with, but on the other hand, <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to sleep over <laughs> one yeah. way or another. I just, okay. I just see that one being the great, the great, I don't know what I'm really voting on. You know, like, it's kind of a trip, <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like. And it's hard right now it's, to flush out the laws ourselves. This, yeah, I mean, this one is just, um, it's not like you're allowing the use of it. You're allowing the retail sale of it, right? I mean, that's, no, that's the only thing this is. You're allowing the community to decide that. You're not deciding that issue. We're putting it on the ballot simply says it's on the ballot. You're not taking sides. Putting it on a ballot doesn't say that you favor approving it for retail sale or that you're opposed to it. it simply gives the community the choice. Yep. Well, I mean, if we want to give the community choice, I mean, we could probably, I could find 50 things we could put on this ballot <laughs> but to give choices of what but, socks we're going to wear and everything but I, else. But, but I think that's, I mean, it's, but that's my point. Mm -hmm. This is a question of putting it putting it before the voters. It isn't about choosing sides no, no. And make, or making no. a recommendation one way or another. It simply says... Yeah. But in this case, we're putting something on the warning that there is no interest in. So there's, there's nobody that has submitted anything saying that they want to put a retail store in Bethel, right? I, now, this does come with consequences. So 
if the town voted this in, let's say there's no retailer, right? There's nobody that wants to go in right now. But let's say the town votes it in, right? And then somebody comes in and then they say, wait a minute, this was terrible. We should never have done this. And we're going to vote it out. Well, that's good. It's all voted out except for that one retailer that's in here. Now you can't get rid of them. It's in stone forever. You know what I mean? Their grandfather. Their grandfather clause forever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I mean, it's like Randolph. They did theirs and there's nothing over there. You know, they, no. they voted for it and there's no retailer, no anybody, you know. And I know why, why the state did this. I mean, if the state really wanted our input, they would ask us, you know, should we legalize marijuana, right? They never asked us that. They just went and did it, right? They never asked us voters. But, but the only reason why they, they have us doing this is because of the cities in Vermont. It has nothing to do with Bethel. It has to do with the Williston's and the Burlington's and those that collect money, not Bethel. So if you're in Williston, you could vote this in and you can collect your 1% on whatever you make and it's local revenue. Bethel, it means nothing at this point other than keeping it out of the community if you don't want it, you know. But. So, all right, so Lindley, what do you want to do? You've got 12, 13, and 14. We're going to have to I'm, go person by person. I'm not, I'm not putting any of them on, so that's me. Okay, so, and Dave Eddy. So I don't have enough information to do it. To put anything on? Nope. Okay, and then, and Dave's Dave Dave's a no on everything. Dave was a no on anything. Yep. All right, so, okay. So, that's the three. So, what do you, Lindley, what would you like to do? Uh, go to bed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's not allowed, so, I know. So Gene is saying leave on 12, take off 13 and 14, he can go either way. Yeah, I mean, I'm leaning, I'm leaning towards leaving 12, not 13. Um, I don't know, I'm torn on the cannabis because I, I, I see both sides of it of, you know, we just, we don't know enough from the state to I don't even think the voters are making an informed vote. If we as a board can't even say we'd be making an informed vote, putting this on here or not, how can voters be informed when the state hasn't set the rules? So voters are, are voting a personal preference with no actual knowledge mm -hmm. of ramifications behind it. And I think that, I don't know. I'm just, I'm torn on it. Uh, yeah, I'm torn on it. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm saying don't do it because I can't even explain it to you. <laughs> well, and I think the thing is, it's hard to try to follow for me knowing, still trying to knowing that the time limit, like before, when you first presented this, we were, it was, you had to do it within a year. You're, you're voting yeah. this yeah, year, you period. No and now yeah. actually we have, we have time to see what the state says, what the Cannabis Control Board how it comes affects out other with, communities. how it actually no, does. And your point of like, what does it do in other communities? Yeah, I you don't have know. have a very small downtown and it could be completely changed by one retailer good or bad it doesn't it, i'm not giving that weight to which direction right. just recognize that one one retailer can change the landscape and yeah and it's hard too because they're still trying to and then it's the cannabis control board and they're still there's gathering surveys and i do have another you know um packet that they put out and, and and still someone has the right they could still request a town meeting or a vote so we could still vote this at some point, yeah, I, I, well, I just, gonna, there's too many unknowns. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's mm -hmm. the reality is it, it's mm -hmm. this year, it's next year, but is next year more informed as a whole versus this year? I think mm -hmm. next year would be totally more informed because you would add a year that the Cannabis Control Board has gone through, that other towns have tried stuff, if there's legislation that had been passed to correct anything. I mean, it, for me, it's just tough because I, I mean, I can't think it's <laughs> just trying to tell you all the ins and outs, I can't help you. I mean, I, I mean, you know, we have we have like, a hard enough time tough. getting it's yeah. just what I would say your normal businesses that every community has, right? I mean, we have a tough time having, you know, a bakery and those types of businesses, anyways. Not alone some a retailer for marijuana, mm -hmm. and and I think it's a for me it would be again it's a data thing. It's very easy if some individual stood before us and said, geez, I would really like to put a cannabis retail store in the Blossom Block. I don't know, make it up, right? And then it's very easy to say, okay, well, we need to put it on the warning, right? I mean, that's so easy for me to say that. But we have had no interest. Randolph went and did it anyways, and they have had zero interest, you know? So it's like, at this point, what's, what's it matter if we have to do it or not do it? Like, 
Maybe we never voted in. Maybe we. Maybe yes. somebody comes in in February and says, the "I'm going to petition the, the to have devil, it on." The you know? devil's advocate, a yeah. business developer, who says, "Yeah." Randolph says I can do it. You say I can't. I'm going to Randolph. Yep. Well, then we <laughs> that's the end. Then we that's that's the end. <laughs> but how does that? How does that affect us? Probably the ones that are being the substance rather than whether to put it on the ballot. So that's what's that. Paul had a good point. It's Paul. a higher population center up there, so they probably want to go to Randolph anyway. Yeah. Well, then we'll see how they figure. But it doesn't affect negatively anything here. No, I mean, no. we're not going to collect no. any local revenue off no, of no. it. Um, I, you know, again, it's readily available yeah. for all. <laughs> all right. So, so we've got the so Gene, Lindley, and Chris remove say remove the budget one. So that and then sounds like you've got. Possibly three that are saying, like, well, they're saying cannabis retails. What do you think, Paul? Uh, You've got 12. I want to take them all off. You want them all off? Yep. Okay, so Paul says no. Yep. So there's one. And Chris says no. Well. There you go. So you've got a tie on taking them off on 12, because Dave, we, we know Dave said no. He was clear in his last time said no way i don't want any of this on and then three of you agree that we don't do the budget by australian ballot so we take that off and then seemingly if i'm interpreting this correctly you, the majority of you are saying and eh, let's wait on cannabis mm -hmm. so we'll take There's so many unknowns i mean it's just yeah. so much stuff they don't, and every it seems like they're changing Absolutely. every time they get together they well it's a cart before else. the horse thing i mean they're still trying to work yes. all the details out yeah, yeah. from it, what they already a, put in place it's hard i'm, I'm still good. trying to follow it up but so then 12 so what are we going to do about 12. so 12 there's four of you present two of you say yes two of you say no <laughs> or we can wait until yeah do we, dave's do we here at the next meeting no the only reason you have been try you've been saying you'd get through it is because so if somebody wanted to petition they have time they still have time so we can we'll put it on for next meeting at least we'd get a little closer but gene climate change coordinator real real quick uh, the town of randolph uh, is uh, considering the select board meeting they had a special meeting last week in which they have uh, given support to the idea of a shared uh, resource person to manage climate change planning and or you know, implementation of responses. Uh, and I'm suggesting that we uh, with collaboration or whatever from the affected committee, town committees, that we put something on the town agenda that would empower us to move forward with a joint position uh, to deal with climate matters. Uh, currently, Randolph has expressed uh, support and interest. Brookfield has expressed strong interest and support. Braintree has been invited to participate, and I think there are now conversations with Rochester. So that would be five communities sharing a position. Lots of details would need to be worked out. There is currently a six town. Uh, regional coordinator that's been hired by TWR uh, to work with and is that position is being funded by those six communities uh, to deal with those kinds of issues and TWR is uh, developing uh, in its energies subcommittee or whatever, they are working hard at developing uh, planning tools, et cetera, for uh, local communities. So what I'm asking is that uh, involving energy conservation 
planning in the select board. I think those are the ones. The, and oh, DAC, that we develop something so that the town can consider uh, something very specific around climate change action, not just pie in the sky ideals. So I'm looking at the paperwork that and they had four motions and they're talking right. about putting on the articles. The one that I think the key one that Jean is speaking of is shall the town of Randolph establish a staff position according to the town manager to develop the plan processes and procedures across all town departments to meet town climate action goals. So that would be the one question that you put, you know, that you could put to the voters, but then we need to fall back and we need to add something to the budget because well, we, we can't, if you, if you want to put this on the town. So board, we're having a, they're having a position that's just going to be a full time. That's dealing uh, with all these towns. Like we've talked about doing other things, but so basically it'd be a full time position that everybody funds. It would be a full time position shared by right six a towns of communities, say. five or six. But what towns. is that person? What does that person do? What is their what is their um, job description? You know, what does it look like? Or I, I mean, I guess the way I right. I'm not saying that right, right that okay. that so yeah. that this tool wouldn't be helpful. I'm just the way I see it sometimes is. When these things are on the forefront, there are people that take advantage of this situation, and it's probably doing the same thing that Two Rivers is doing, you know. But we're just paying someone to to do something that somebody else started doing. You know what I mean? So I guess I'm. I, so, so to, in my mind, some of the things that that person would do would be to move uh, ideas that we already have in the town plan from the we ought to consider doing this into specific plans and actions for this we should do in 2022 and this we should do in 2023 and but isn't that our our responsibilities here and and the town manager i mean no, well, I know, I know, oh God. But, oh God. But, but, I'm, but I'm just saying, like, the, the town plan is exactly. is managed by the it town is. manager and the select board. So yeah. I mean, that's, but, and that's where I'm saying is we're going to pay energy. somebody to do something that we should be doing ourselves right. already, you know. And to write the grant proposal, grant proposals, got that in the budget the, <laughs> for all of the funds. That will be that are becoming available and are already available for developing the plan, for implementing, for coordinating, for managing the uh, those particular funds. It's it's a it's a uh, it's a position it to supplement the work that our current staff are already doing to enable climate change uh, action to actually take place, rather than to just be in a, a, someday we ought to maybe consider having a, a charging station. It, it's already in a town plan, but who's been doing anything about that? And not just the energy committee. That's the, the point is to have some staffing support for our capacity as a town to deal with the issues that are going to be coming down the pike at us. And to think proactively ahead of schedule before we have our backs against the wall and are now looking for dollars to do X, Y, and Z. Those things are all going to be available, but do we have the resources to do it? For example, uh, two years ago in Randolph, there was an opportunity to apply for a grant to put a charging station in the town of Randolph. Nobody in the town office applied for that grant. They didn't get it because nobody 
apply. Right. Yeah. It's 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 that's the kind of thing that a, a climate that a coordinator for any program could could do. Could the position, uh, not, it's not a position, but the 10,000 that you put in there um, for grant assistance, could that potentially be part of this, right? So to sort of answer your budget question of, instead of going back to the drawing board and the budget, mm -hmm. could it be, I mean, we don't know. We have we no don't idea. Know what, what I, have, a budget I mean, are they going right? to pay, so, you know, if they're going to pay, um, if you got six towns and are paying sixty thousand dollars a year, the ten grand we just put in is even going to cover it if they're going to do us equally, and that doesn't do me any good. So then you get to pay if, benefits and well, all yeah, because we need to figure out. What we need yeah. is some idea, uh, right, of how yeah. what the position is funding. But I mean, I can. I'm reading the information that you that well, you brought, which was good, which is uh, and, and is helpful. I just don't know. So my answer would be no. I don't think that's going to be what we the so, money that ten thousand because then if we had other grants we wouldn't have anyone right. to write them because obviously if someone's going to do this for multiple towns you're not paying them thirty grand you know so right. if you, even if you divvied it up and so that's my thing is I'm if you choose to put on the warning I don't care but I, I have to fund it because if it passes but, I can't stand it to tell me that's great <laughs> we need to put money no, to fund it so, 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 so I guess you could but two 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 responses. Yeah. Uh, one is we understand that it cannot be funded until it's been part of the budget. So right. that doesn't mean that this person would be engaged on April 1st of 2022. Right. It means that no, we're going we we will move ahead with that when we can fund it and maybe a year from, and it would be a year from now when we could put it into the budget but we would be in a position to move forward when, you know, because the town has, quote, asked us to do that. Oh, I see, instead of putting it on the same warning that you're gonna fund it out. Not, the, not to establish, the pos not to hire the pos person right now, but to say, look, let's. Is there interest in hiring Let's right? move in this direction and then have it in, our hip pocket when we're putting the budget together for 2023. That's one response. Okay. And that's a response that I've raised with other towns. That it, this is not something that we can easily put on warm this year when the budget's already been set. I, so you're basically saying let's put so the question I'm out now to see if anybody's interested and then fund it in the future. So basically, so you could even shall the town of Randolph establish staff position in, in the future or something? Or you could just explain it. So I, I see what but you're saying. But I think it, it can be a confusing question because mm -hmm. one would say, well, that's a no-brainer. We should have somebody doing that, right? But I also look at as, you know, as a businessman that we have infrastructure already put in place that should be doing that, right? I mean, the energy committee was, when we put the energy committee together, that, that was solely their job, which not every town has an energy committee, but the energy committee was to take the energy and climate um, concerns and directions from the state and apply those in our local setting, right, with the help of the select board. And, but any, and, and we include these things in the town plan, and the town plan is, is our guide to managing the town. Teresa's and ours, and I guess the way I just see it is this an extra layer in the cake that do we need to pay for this person when we we should be doing our jobs ourselves. I mean, Randolph, the reason why they missed the charging station is because somebody didn't do the job, right? I mean, our energy committee put together a grant for a charging station, and then we found out the charging station was going to cost like, what was it? Several seven thousand. times what we were told it was going to cost. <laughs> so then we bagged yeah, it. The funding fell through. Yeah, and yeah. then the funding, and then the grant funding or something fell through. Yeah. And we also found out that that was for a short-term contract, uh, and then the maintenance was going to fall to us, which was going to be pricey. So it was a whole thing. But but I, but um, this was helpful. So thank you. It did explain once I I was questioning at first, but then I got it. So um, but I just I just wonder if it's just overlap of. I mean, there's, and then every town's made up differently, right? I mean, if you're in a town that has a 
town administrator, because administrators and managers do different things, right? Then it's easy for a select board to say, we need that position, because if not, the select board's going to do it, right? You and know? I do think it comes back to capacity, and Teresa's expressed within the office a lack of capacity for grants in general. We're actively looking at options of a shared economic development person between multiple towns. I think in a lot of ways, it's, it's no different. If we're looking at one, why are we not looking at another? It's not that there's no entity within our town thinking about or focused on economic development, it's that it's, it adds more force behind it and it's a dedicated person who their entire focus is about one thing as opposed to, you're right, it is part of all of our things, but as are 100 other things and then multiply that by 100 for trees, right? Like, no. none of us are going to spend all of our focus on one element of these things. It's in a, in a lot of ways. It's why we create the committees, right? It's that they can they right. can kind of spearhead it and bring the information back. And I think it's just sort of it is adding a little more force. To so do you action. want me to just add it to the warning so you guys can deal with it when Dave comes next week? I mean, yeah. since you guys are split on the Australian Valley, we're talking about waiting for Dave. Do you want me to? Because I know it's getting late and you still have more to talk about on the. Do you want to? What do you want to do with this? Do you want to add it to the net to the draft warning and uh, this draft warning and have Dave, or do you just want to say no? I still need a lot more information about how this position would function. I mean, okay. just the logistics of one person dealing with the individual needs of six towns, because I need might be totally different than brain trees or right. brook fields. I, you know, I think it's a good concept to do that to have a centralized position that would deal with, not deal with all these things, because I don't think one person could deal with this six times worth of needs. Yeah. It would be a very much overhead view of, of all the towns. What they would have in common, perhaps, you know, mm -hmm. what, what can all the towns do that can be readily done next year. But I just, it, there's just too much missing. So it seems like you're split about this one too. Bones. It seems like two of you could go one way and two the next. So well, again, I, I, on my end, just to state my position clearly, is it has nothing to do with climate change. It has to do with the management of the climate right. change, right? right? And I feel that there is infrastructure in our town to hand. It's not going to be light switch, and we have to do X, Y, Z all in this year, you know, mm -hmm. or two years or three years. It's going to be over a long period of time, mm -hmm. and. You know, we're going to be doing little pieces here and there, and we should be able to coordinate that stuff ourselves. I mean, there's there's other things in this town that we would love to have too that we don't because we can't afford it, right? Like we don't have a water commissioner, we don't have a public works director, we don't have you know a lot of these functions because we can't afford to build in all these positions. Instead, we have a person that has yeah. multiple hats, you know. <laughs> oh, exactly. so, so, you know, yeah. but I mean, it's, it's true. You don't have I guess that's the way I look at it. Is I think it's a no-brainer that you should have somebody or something or right. some mechanism to move this right efficiently. But do we have to pay somebody to do it? You know, like. And if you have you know, choose, I mean, it's, there's other. I mean, you know, zoning enforcement. I mean, it, it's all about need, right? Yeah, you know, we talked gonna, about that social services position. position. I mean, there's like there's do we need? We could have. We could. You know, if we hired a couple full-time people more, you could do manage all these things better than we do now, or add more want. So it's tough. I, I get what you're saying, and and uh, nobody's wrong here. Is Randolph the only one that yeah. put that on their warning? Is there part part of well, in terms of cost, when Hartford hired a full-time person to do this. That person paid for their job twice over, just by the savings. By the savings, yeah. Now, that's one, one way, one response. The second is, the, uh, we have some good stuff in the town plan. I'm not sure the community, the town, knows what's there or appreciates what's there <clears throat> in the town plan, especially as it relates to, to climate change. I think having something on the agenda of the town meeting gives us an opportunity to say to the community, look what we are doing. 
look what we have already said is important. And, it, and give us town uh, the backing, the emotional whatever backing to, to proceed with what we have already said in the town plan. We've said that as a select board. We haven't said it as a town. The, and the, the third thing is that I happen to be one of those crazy people who thinks that climate change uh, is going to be more expensive if we put it off than if we begin to address it sooner rather than later. And, and I would, uh, uh, so for those three reasons, I would respectfully suggest that, again, putting it before the people is a good thing to do. Again, I agree with you 100 percent on everything. I just I think the mechanisms are there to to drive the ship. And in this case, what would happen is we would put something on the warning. Let's say let's say if people voted it in, right? They're voting in for to have a coordinator, so we're now going to be tied to this coordinator that we have no idea how much we're going to pay them, any of the details on what they're gonna do for us. But we've made the commitment to six towns now that we're, we're on board. And I agree with you, probably in the town of Hartford, having a full-time person probably does pay dividends because they have three large boroughs in that town and they have a huge I'm, budget, you know? Where we're just town of Bethel, we gotta watch out for our budget. I'm, and, I'm simply saying this is what another town has done. I just, not to say it would even happen yeah. here. I'm just saying, well, um, we also have the option of not doing anything in the town ballot and saying as a select board, yeah, we want to go ahead and, and pursue this and see what we can make out of it. Yeah, I mean, we can also, yeah, we, we could, we could act separate and say over the next 12, yeah, we're interested in exploring this further with neighboring communities and we will continue to explore that and if necessary we'll put it in the next year's budget. We don't have to have the town permission to do that. Right. That's an option too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, next meeting can we? <laughs> All right. Well eventually we have to get the warning yeah, put together. So. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean, um, you guys have been trying to get, I mean, obviously you didn't sign until January last year, but you were trying to get it done in case somebody wanted to petition. I can look again, also look again at the, um, uh, I'm going to put that for the draft warning. Um, I, I got to look at the calendar. We have a municipal calendar that kind of lays out the deadlines for everything. So deadline for signing, warning, and petitions. So, all right. All right, so won't we go through the VORAC? Okay, so the letter of support is just really a discussion. I think uh, I just barely saw the draft of it that was came to us, and it looked good, and it was going to the school. Because VORAC, you can only have three letters of support, and we were really, they were trying to find the fine balance of who that could be. So one mm -hmm. of them is going to be signed, signed by the school and the you know, school board, select board, and then um, they were thinking about getting one from AARP and, and someone else. So. Um, I saw it, it looks good, but like I said in your report, you're not going to see it until it'll be, the grant has to go in on the 29th. So um, they were still kind of editing that out. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that they do need is this project resolution of commitment from the municipality for projects involving class four town highways. So um, this just talks about, um, so this, the Bethel has to sign a resolution that and it says that the Bethel Select Board is in full support of the project referred to herein, agrees to continually allow the reference re recreational activity to occur on this town highway under the direction of the town for the useful life of the investment, which is determined by forest parks and recreation to be a minimum of five or 10 years, I think they're gonna say 10, 
from the end date of the grant agreement and the town commits to maintaining the funded recreational improvements and useful repair for their useful life as defined above. So this is something that this BORAC grant is requiring. We can't get past you know, point one. If you look in the budget, I put in a little bit of money for trail maintenance. Obviously, a lot of it's done by volunteers, but I did put something in the budget. That way it shows that you're- So are they, are they saying the, the infrastructure that we would put into play, then obviously we would maintain that for a period of time. Right. right. Yeah. Pretty yeah. up exactly. That's basically what they're they're going to give us okay. five million. They want to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Money. I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, I mean five million, five hundred thousand. They're not going to squander it. So I, I have not filled in yet. Just so you know, exactly which town highway this is, because I need to talk to Chris Fors. I know. I think one of them is going to be um, maybe the top portion of of Ringe, but so um, so I don't know exactly so i know part of it's going to be range maybe the top part of woodland because that's near quimby so it's range so I'm, i haven't heard back from chris fours yet so when you look at it obviously i haven't written in the town highway number yet because i don't i don't know and I, it's going to be multiple we know it's i'm pretty sure it's going to be the top of woodland and the top of range because they're fours so um so and i'll know that as he's flushes out the details of the map sure of course so that's in addition to the support letter? Yep, so this is a whole, yeah, they're gonna do the letter of support, um, then this project resolution, and then they gave us another letter, um, which says the town of Bethel owns and manages a diverse set of properties in Bethel Village that are currently used or designated for outdoor recreation. The town fully supports the uses and improvements to town facilities and properties described in this application. The Town of Bethel will allow the public to access the properties with trail construction projects listed below for a minimum of 10 years and will maintain the investments. This is development of the multi-use outer loop trail, connector trails in the Bethel Woods Trail System, um, where it lies on Bethel Rec Center property. Construction of phase two of the skate park, the universally acceptable, acceptable, accessible, excuse me, pathways, an accessible pool lift and map kiosk at the breakfast at the rec center, construction of a walking trail and installation of a small map kiosk at Carla's Meadow, um, a rebuilding of inaccessible stairs at the River Street Bridge access point um, adjacent to 16 Miller Drive. The town of Bethel will allow access and maintain public access and investments for a minimum of five years for kiosk installations at Evine Park, River Street Bridge, Bethel Town Hall, Bethel Common, Brandlier Town Forest, Quimby Town Forest, Bethel Recreation Center, Carlos Meadow. I don't know where we're putting a kiosk here, but um, so and, but anyway, so this has to go on town letterhead, and then um, either I'll sign it or Chris Jarvis will sign it either way. But so this is it's just well, it's coming together. They're flushing it out, so it just needs more and more support. So the way I read this class four commitment, maybe I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. so if we if part of this we build the trail system that up uh, just make it up comes out on the far end of a class four road right then we have to we're we are responsible for making sure that people have access to that trailhead right so driving let's say let's say somebody wants to drive out to park to go on the trail system or something then that means that that class four road mm -hmm. that we may not typically maintain we are swearing to that we are going to maintain that road I mean, so I that we would still have so that there's to access close. in and out. I think we would still have authority to close roads, if, like is much like they do with Lincoln Gap. Right? Is that what they I'm close, reading? They close a road in the winter. Because yeah. They don't make I mean, it doesn't get into any more that. details. Like, right. is it seasonal? Like, can you just close it in the winter or whatnot? But it sounds like we, because there's often, you know, as Doug knows, there's a lot of Class Four roads in town that we, you know don't touch, right, unless it has to. You okay. know, I drove up one there a couple weeks ago with Teresa. Let me tell you, my truck had a tough time getting through there. Well, but, uh, it says that, um, it just, you know, we would have to make sure that we're, you know, we would have to maintain. It's saying that it's in full support of the project referred to herein, and we agree to continually allow the reference recreational activity to occur on this town highway under the direction of the town for the useful life of the investment. So part of the resolution is that you're, you're allowing, allowing them to use the road, yep. um, which is determined. And then um, 
it says to the town commits to maintain the funded recreational improvements. So we're not agreeing to fund the road. We're saying that if we put, if they put $500,000 in trails, we agree to maintain the trails. Mm -hmm. And it says if the town should allow additional improvements to the effective length of highway to accommodate uses other than the reference recreational activity, which we know is trails, those uses shall not preclude the intended rec activity for the stated useful life. So I think they're saying, if you all of a sudden upgrade this road to a class something else, you're still gonna allow these guys to use it as trails. Um, but you know how it is. I mean, if we're gonna, mm -hmm. no, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I mean, it's just, yeah. if we're gonna allow access, we know that there are some class four roads that you can't get a lot of vehicles through. Yeah, so I don't, you know, I think this allow is saying that people, the same all. thing, that we're, they're saying is your, we're not, we are going to allow this activity to occur on this town highway. Um, I think that's what we're saying. Right, it's not actually about vehicle access, it's mm -hmm. about outdoor recreation. No, but we access. know how that ties in, I mean. Sure, but I don't think this is know. in any way saying you have to maintain a class four road in the middle of winter so that somebody can get their bike to the trailhead. It's that you're allowing them to use the trail that's off of that mm -hmm. road. They have to get themselves there. Yeah, it's not about the, the maintenance of. Yeah, it sounds basically they're what they're trying to do is they're yeah, protecting they're, their they're investment, nice. and if they give you money, then that's what you're doing. And yeah. so basically, they're saying we have proposed a recreational trail project described generally as work to be done along this certain trail, yeah. and you have to list what the work is. And um, you can snowshoe. You can snowshoe into it. And yeah. You can snowshoe into it. Well, you'll have to in a lot of these because oh, you can drive it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's saying, that we so, to continue to permit people. Anyway, to so, if, if, so you'll need a motion, a motion to um, adopt the project resolution of commitment from municipality. So you'll need a motion to adopt the resolution. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Well, that's going around. And going on record that you'll have to make sure that you'll have to maintain those roads too. Because well, that, that'll be the next thing it it when somebody will. can't get up that road for whatever that's reason. It's true. You're um, gonna be up there. And then I'll sign this letter on the letterhead um, saying that you support this. Um, so we allow access and maintain public investments for minimum. Yeah, I'll just get a reminder someone needs a zoning permit. <laughs> so. Um, all but it is something we'll have to think about down the road. You know, we may have to put some extra money in the budget, yeah. whatever, wherever you put it, to have someone go in and do some maintenance. Well, we did. You know. We talked about that. Most of it, the maintenance is done now, is done by volunteers for free. Um, so, um, but but the trail system is also, also smaller right now, where this is going to be vastly improved. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to do it right, you know. Might be, I don't know, maybe there's somebody up there. Pay one so I'll like, remind Rebecca know. before we sign this that, you know, I'm not, I want to know where she's putting the kiosk at the town hall. That I'm questioning. And I just remind her they need zoning. Yeah, so there's so not much, not, not much real estate out there. <laughs> not much real estate out there. No, I'm not. So that's it. That's, that's it for the VOREC. Um, You're all good there? Yes. Yeah. Anything left on the town manager's report that we didn't cover? Doubt it. Okay. Uh, select board meeting minutes from the eighth. What a great meeting that was. Yeah. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. I mean, I would have rather. I'm okay that I missed it. <laughs> yeah, we, we all got infinity comp time after that. Yeah. Move their acceptance. Just a little minor thing. Present. Spelled my name wrong. <laughs> got it right in all the rest of the article. Yeah. But, okay, it's wrong in the but, beginning. But yeah, it's an EY instead of an EE. I know. Oh, sorry. Okay, attendance. You can't eat. No, sorry about that. I should have caught it. Second. So Jean made a motion. Do you have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, that's right. She can't. I didn't second. forget you were in here, but I forgot that. She's trying to move us along. <laughs> she can do whatever she wants. Yeah, exactly. Why not? Then we had... Um, My turn, actually. 
Yeah. Dinner who's, who's it next week? <laughs> we have dinner. We have breakfast. Yeah. 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 So. Just gonna get up and go to school. Mm-hmm. Hey, I remember when I first got on the board, we had some like ten o'clockers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it used to be <laughs> like, last week, no, especially here. budget season. Like, like one year we were fighting the budget. We also had the um, um, town plan, oh, river, yeah, corridor, was, uh, river, river, corridor, river corridor thing going on at the same time, and we were here to like midnight every night. Like it was brutal. I didn't see Doug that year. He was he was at home in bed. <laughs> uh, anything else come before the board? Yeah, we haven't beaten to death, right? <laughs> Alright, so I think we just have to make sure at the next one that we're prepared to put to bed the, uh, the town warning and the, um, the budget itself, right? Okay. Yes. Alright, just need a meeting to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, have a good night everybody.